Isn't it unfortunate that daylight saving is a thing, huh? I will die on this hill and that it should be abolished in its entirety. I will be taking no further questions and I will not elaborate on this. It should simply not be the case that some people in parts of the world get to change their clocks randomly and for no real reason. And yes, I know there's a real reason, but I don't agree with it and therefore it is wrong. Because of course that means that if you're in a country that does not do this arbitrary, actually not arbitrary, but still stupid method of time measurement, then that means that you are screwed, for you must adjust your timeline, or everyone who watches you must adjust their timeline. And isn't that just the worst? It is 10.06 in the evening, and thank you very much for watching and tuning in for today. I don't know how you have me on today, whether I'm on in the background, are you at work? Are you chilling on the couch? Are you on your computer? Are you on your phone? Either way, it is wonderful to see you all today. I am testing something very different. Please, I need you to tell me if everything is okay. If you are experiencing buffering, if you are experiencing uh, any kind of uh, uh, any kind of pixelation, anything that was different in normal streams that is not different in these streams, I need you to tell me immediately. I am testing new stream settings, and I'm going to take some time to explain to you what I'm doing before we move into Mass Effect. So if you just give me a second, I will uh, I will move into that. <clears throat> so let me know as soon uh, as soon as something happens if you if you are usually someone who buffers the stream uh picture is really really good well that is precisely what i'm hoping for so yeah we'll see we'll see if it we'll see if it stays if the audio cuts out at all like i haven't changed the audio at all i'm gonna explain this to you in the best way that i know how i learned this all this afternoon uh, I did some homework today when the morning stream was over, and I'll tell you where it all came from in a second. For now, please tell me what your mental health is doing, what your physical health is doing. Thank you for tuning into the Everything GM broadcast. If you're new, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. And join the Discord if you haven't already. Subscribe, like, blah, 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 blah. And it is now 2 a.m. for some of you, which is fairly sad. And, uh, yeah, no, dude, all of these songs that I open with are bangers. They really are. Daylight saving should have been abolished like 60 years ago. Correct. It's still pretty arbitrary, especially in the modern day. Or instead of chasing our clocks, we could just change our work hours. Wouldn't that be something, huh? No, 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 no. That, anything, literally anything but change the work hours. Anything. They would, they would do anything. Hey, Sylv. Um... It wasn't arbitrary between 1939 and 1945, and then it became arbitrary, at least to my limited understanding. I'm not sure where it actually came from. I know why it's there. It's there so that, like, days in the winter are shorter and days in the summer are longer. They switch things back so that you can have, like, more sunlight in the day. But, you know, that's usually due to the fact that most people go, go to work in the dark and go to sleep, like, go home in the dark. So just make the work hours shorter, and then you won't have to do daylight saving anymore. Isn't it crazy how that works? So crazy. Somehow not more tired than I usually am out of 10. Oh, okay. Murray Gold solo piano arrangements out of 10. Okay, I haven't done any of that yet, but we'll get there. I'm doing just home from swimming and sauna out of 10. That sounds amazing. Ugh, swimming and sauna. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm going to test something with the stream deck. Are you ready? Oh my god, it works. Holy shit. Wow. Wow. Wow! <laughs> I'm pressing buttons that swap my scenes. Guys, it's amazing. Look. Look, we're gaming. And now we're chatting. And now we're starting. And now we're chatting. And now we're gaming. And now we're chatting again. And now I'm sharing my screen. And now we're gaming. And now we're chatting. Look, I'm over here. Now I'm over here. Now I'm up there. I'm over here now. I'm over there. I'm over here. I'm nowhere. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. I'm taking a piss. I'm over here. 
I'm over here. <laughs> uh, isn't it cool? Uh, so cool. I am Helldivers just had a major update and I'm at work out of 10. I am Malevolon Creek was taken like not 12 hours ago and now it's under attack again out of 10. <laughs> 3 out of 10. Oh, oh, this is this is going to be big. This is a big deal. When Thomas is not like 8 or 9, we need to we need to talk about it. I'm tired and annoyed. 10 minutes ago, we received a complaint of sexual harassment. <sighs> oh. Two years I've worked here, never had to handle one. Damn, really? That's 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 like impressive in and of itself. I mean, it's also the bare minimum. Like, we should not be sexually harassing people in the workplace. Or, <laughs> or anywhere. But, damn, in, in two years, you haven't had to deal with one. That's, that's insane. Turns out my workplace doesn't even have a procedure for handling that type of complaint. Excuse me? Really? Holy shit. That's insane. That's actually crazy. Uh, when we're seeing the Cabbage Man button, we're getting it. We're getting there. We're getting there. I'm doing a little bit at a time, all right? But that was pretty entertaining. I'm changing my score to 6 out of 10 for that little pop-around whack-a-mole stunt. <laughs> Wait, Yugi's grandpa? Wait, are you reading the manga while watching as well? That's pretty dope. <laughs> uh, anyway, super cool to see you guys here. Um, I'm glad you guys... Hey, Raz, what's up? All right, so I'm going to take some time and show you guys what, I'm, what I've learned today. I'm going to switch over to... Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm going to switch over to screen sharing and I'll start... Uh, I'm going to open up Paint. I'm becoming pirate software. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. So... Uh, hang on a second. Need to make this so that it's... Ah, that's Discord. There we go. Need to show you that it's paint. Wait a minute. Are we not allowed to... Can I not show you that it's paint? No ways! Can I not just draw things on paint? Does it have to be a black screen? Does it Does it do things there? Is that is that something... No, you can't see that. Okay. Huh. That's very strange. I wonder why. Alright, well, let's, uh, let's see if I can draw something else. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can draw somewhere else. Uh, draw on screen. Epic pen. A pen for your PC. A desktop marker software. No, I just want to, I just want to draw on a page. Just give me a drawing tool. No, it's not, I don't want an extension. I just want to, I just want you to give me... You know what? We're getting draw on screen. I'm doing the most cursed roundabout way that I could possibly do this. We're going draw on screen, Microsoft Edge add-on. Draw on page. Ah, oh, sick. We get to actually draw things. Okay, cool. I'm going to get this. Add the extension. We're getting there. Hold on. Let me switch over to chatting again. It's so cool. I don't have to move to my OBS to get this done. Do you understand how awesome this is? Oh, okay. So if I like... Oh. I'm being... Hang on, I'm being phoned. Give me a second. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Say it again. You chop? No. What? What am? What am I supposed to do? Googling. Uh, you guys can hear that. Say it again. Search some website that you can doodle. Okay. Search some. With, oh God! Can you mute the stream while you talk to me, please? Can I hang up? Okay. Yes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> If you call me when I'm live, you're gonna, you're gonna... <laughs> All right, so, so this, um, uh, the, this is, uh, the, I, I, I want to get a, a page to doodle on. I didn't realize that I could just find a page to doodle on it on the screen, but I meant like, um, uh, 
I, I meant like, I mean, this this could be a cool extension as well. So let me let me grab that. So I've added a, I've added the thing, and then the extension is yeah, draw on page, and then I can just do it. So let me add a like a regular white square. Let's get a yeah, let's get a white square. Let's get a gray square so that I, so that it doesn't like blind everyone who's looking at it. We'll go with a like a dark gray square. There we go. No, that that's got textures on it. I don't want a texture on my gray square. I just want a gray color. Ugh, it just looks like it comes from a Fine. We're going to do it like this. Here we go. And then we've got yeah, let me go off to screen sharing. Okay. Oh, oh god. Oh, okay. Okay. This is fine. And then we're still working out the kinks, so don't worry about it. Here we go. Okay, a gray page. Now I get to explain to you what I've been doing for the last little while. Now, I noticed something that was going on. Hold on quickly. I need to I need to quickly send a message. Okay. Oh, all right. Let's look at chat. <laughs> we checking mental health. Read, went and read the news out of ten. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's been it's been pretty wild. You know what? Let's uh, we we can talk about we can talk about some sad stuff if um, if you would like that to be the TikTok recap today. I went and read the news as well. <clears throat> it's been all over my page. I went. I will be on break, but I'm not right now. I'm referring to page 17 of chapter one, where he comments on her chest size. Whoa. Okay. Thanks, Grandpa. Okay. I, for whatever reason, I found myself listening to a random ass movie score that Murray Gold did in 2011. This goes way too hard. Arguably harder than his who did than his who did from. That's a weird sentence. From 2010 to 2016. Mm -hmm. I want to be pitch black, but then I'm copying pirate software. <laughs> Also, thoughts for our sweet resident moose, who I'm pretty sure is in the middle of surgery. Ah, oh, moose! We we send thoughts to moose. Moose, I hope your surgery goes very, very well. If you're watching the VOD, then... Love. Big love. Bigger love. Yeah. It's been a, it's been a pretty somber day, Raz, but what we can do is... Um, uh... We we can we can talk about it if you want to, uh, or we can or we can take a break from it. All right. So here's what I want to do. I'm gonna show you what I've done at the very least. Oh, look at this. All right. So can I? Ooh. Oh, see, this is very cool. Oh, wait. Can I? Why can't I just? Wait. The line is ah. I want the line to be here. Okay. All right. Cool. Can I change the whip? Jesus. Oh, it like zooms out like that. Okay. Can I change the brush width to like maybe six? No, men. Why am I drawing boxes? I want to... No, I want... Oh my god. What is happening? Okay, there we go. Let's try again, shall we? Again, why am I... Ah! Because I'm... Okay, okay, I understand what's going on. Okay, I just did... Oh, there we go. Okay, oh, Jesus Christ. Ah! <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Just delete it! Christ! There we go. Delete it. Okay, go back there. Turn the brush width down on four. Okay! I hate this. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Uh, can I erase? That's the circle brush. That's the spray brush. Can I erase? There's an erase button. No, that's not the... Er there, remove, select... Oh, selection, remove selection. So... I want to go to the selection tool. I hate that. Why do, Why when I click draw... Why do? Why when I click circles, it does a thing? Okay. All right, we're fine. We're okay. By her, I mean Anzu, the character gets localized into T. Yugi's, uh, Taya, not T. <laughs> Yugi's childhood friends who's still a teen. Who? <sighs> South African screams at technology live. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Okay. 
Hold on. Okay. All right, so here's what I've learned about streaming, right? So this is me. Okay, this is MJ. I'm here, okay? And I'm like, I'm talking into the stream. All right, cool. The stream goes through what we call a little hose pipe. All right, uh, this is move objects. Can I, can I zoom this in and out? Ah, that zooms in the drawings, okay. Right, the stream goes through a little hose pipe and it ends up here with you. This is your TV screen and there's you on a chair. There's you, okay? We'll call this person, uh, so this is, hang on, who's in chat right now? <laughs> Let's call this person uh, Sylph. Okay, so this is Sylph. So here's Sylph, right. I've become pirate software. <laughs> Can you draw all of us? Thank you. Whew. Okay, wait, Sylph, how many of you are here? Times eight, so Sylph times eight. Let's say all eight of you are here, eight Sylphs, all right? Now, let's say that Sylph's internet is X. Okay, now, through this hose pipe, is a stream. You can think of it like a stream of water. And I am streaming 1080p. That's what I do. Okay. You are seeing 1080p cuz I'm cuz I'm streaming across there. Nothing gets lost, everything's fine, all right? You see it in 1080p. This is how a normal stream goes. But here's the thing. My the the, the width of the hose needs to be wider if all of that 1080p is gonna come through. So you will only see a full 1080p if my hose, not a metaphor, is is wide is is wide enough. All right. And that width, that width here is called the bit rate. Okay. Now <clears throat> now a bit rate is a video like upload speed. Basically, it tells me how much network of my internet line I'm willing to shove into the stream so the 1080p can go in and 1080p can come out. If I take the, the bit rate and I make it too small, then 1080p can't go in and therefore you can't see 1080p. Now, I noticed this. When we play normal games like Mass Effect or other things like that, Initially during the streams, when we play Mass Effect, it was fine. Initially during the old streams, we had a lot of buffering issues because I was putting my bitrate at a very high number. Let's, I think it was like, it might have been like uh, 14, it might have been 12,000. Let's say 12 megabits, megabits per second. Okay, that's 12,000 kbps, all right? Cool. So I... All right, no, listen, I'm, I'm trying to teach you, all right? Just, <laughs> I know you're not, I know you're sitting too normally, and yes, maybe I have to, fine. We're going to draw a cat. Here's, hang on, here's Sylv's, here's Sylv's cat. Need ears. Okay, and a tail, all right. And Sylv is sitting too normally. Okay, should we make her legs like, here we go. Her The cat is sitting like in her lap. There we go. So there's Sylv, she's watching, hold on, and she's munching on something. And her other hand is knitting. There we go. Okay, that's how you know it's Sylph. All right, cool. So, so this, um, this, what happens here is if I stream it at 12 megabits per second, right? That's my bit rate. Then 1080p will go in perfectly fine. But let's say Sylph's internet is not very fast. Let's say it's a little bit unstable. Let's say Sylph is watching on mobile. It doesn't work that way. What she gets when I give 1080p, she gets a big buffering screen because the the rate that I'm sending water through the hose, her internet does not have the capacity to hold all at once. So she needs to load it for a while. And that's what, that's what makes people buffer and go off the stream. And I don't like that. So in the initial part, I turned the bit rate down. I turned it down to the minimum that you can have for, oh, I, can't, I can't draw it all, hang on. 
I turned it down for the minimum that you can have for, um, uh, hold on. There we go. For the minimum that you can have, which is 4.5 megabits per second. All right. For 1080p streaming, that's the minimum. All right. Now here comes a problem. During things like Mass Effect and other like slower moving things, like Mass Effect combat is maybe fast, but it's there's not a lot going on on the screen at one time, right? And especially during dialogue, it's perfectly fine. During slower games, this is perfectly sufficient. But there is an issue when it comes to faster games. And I noticed this with Helldivers. I was watching back the Helldivers stream and I noticed that there were some little blocks going on when we were moving around the stream. All right. And these little blocks, basically, if I've got a full screen like this, these little blocks are basically, I will not play Happy Birthday on stream. There we go. Baby, basically, these are like giant pixel collections, all right? They're giant collections of pixels that have made one box together. And those are called artifacts. Artifacting happens when you are putting 1080p in and your bitrate is too low to grab all of it when there's something that's like fast motion, like fast moving. So for example, when you're playing slower games, it's fine. But faster games, it needs that 1080p like quick, 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 quick. And the bitrate is just not enough. But here's the balancing act. You, are you, I, I hope you're starting to understand the issue. Because if I put the bitrate too low, we get artifacting. And then the stream quality goes down. But if I put the bitrate too high, then Sylv can't watch. And then her cat gets annoyed. All right. So, so what I need to do is find a sweet spot. But now I've found something else. So my solution here, in order to find something that reduces artifacting, but still gives you a higher performance and without buffering, there's a sweet little spot of balancing that you can do. I will give in, I will give 1080p. And in the middle of this hose pipe, my graphics card, which is a monster one, will take this 1080p and downscale it to 720p or in my in my instance 936 it's like a sweet spot i found nine 936p so one what is it one six five five by one six five one six six eight over nine three six whatever divisible by eight right and that's it so basically i'm giving 1080p my graphics card scales it down to a very high definition version of 936p, which is almost 1080p, and then it comes through to Sylv. That way, I can increase the bitrate from 4.5 even higher. Right now, the bitrate is sitting on, uh, let's see, right now the bitrate's on 5,000. Okay, and that's the idea. So, what I want you guys to do is now that we are so basically what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm, I'm 1664. I'm downscaling to 1664 by 936. And we're going to see if on fast moving streams that helps. Technically, because of my internet speed, I can actually make the bit, I can jack it up the wazoo. I can have like, I can have like 50,000 kilobytes per second. I can have a 50 meg line because this, my upload speed is like 400 megabits per second, right? It's, it's huge. It's crazy. I have a 500 meg line, 500 up, 500 down. It's very stable, so I can do lots with this. But the problem is, especially if everyone else is on mobile, they can't. Like, mobile specifically sucks at encoding this kind of stuff. So, um, and Twitch is even worse. Like, even at, at least, hold on. Like, at least, um, at least YouTube offers a, a, a user client side, like, encoder that you can, uh, sorry, um, uh, transcoding that you can edit from 1080p to 720p. You can select the resolution you're viewing a video or stream at. Twitch doesn't even do that. It just auto does it for you, unless you're a partner and then it'll do it for you. So yeah, YouTube just does it for everyone, which is great. So my point is, basically what I've done is I've hopefully found a sweet spot. Now, what I'm gonna do for you here is I've just decided I want to try and put the bitrate uh, slightly higher and I wanna see what will happen. So, uh, you need to tell me once we're streaming. Uh, I want you to tell me. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the the video bitrate up to 5.5, and it's gonna be a little cheeky. You might see some buffering. I really hope the stream's not gonna crash, but you might see some buffering, and then maybe we'll come back. And I want you to see if there's a if there's a visible difference. 
Okay. Especially if you're on mobile. All right, here we go. Okay, so you might... We might have some issues. I think it might have... Let's see if it worked. Did it kill the stream? Are we good? Let's try and refresh this, see if it worked. Yeah, we're still good. Okay, alright, we st I think everything must be... Everything might be good. Okay. Alright, I want you guys to let me know if everything is okay. Is, is there is there a lot of buffering? Is, are there issues here? Like, what is is everything fine? So far for me, it should be okay. But that's it. That's what I've tried to do. Okay. So there's Sylv. And if and if if the quality has gone down, if the if the video like if there's artifacting, if there's anything like that, then you need to let me know, uh, and then we'll we'll talk about it at the end. So I've jacked it up to five point five. Which is like the highest I'm willing to go. 6,000 was the recommended, but I know that some people have slower internet, especially your side. So uh, it might not make it all the way across, but we'll see. Okay. So what do you guys think? I look away for two seconds and man is leading the Manhattan Project. <laughs> so this is how I split the atom. All right, Zarif. This is how it goes. It's working fine right now, even on mobile. That's impressive. Okay. Awesome. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Okay, right, well, that was fun, and uh, a really sharp knife, <laughs> MJ Heimer, correct, All right, so this is what, so it's actually also like sharpening the image as well, so hopefully we might get a better, a, a clearer image as we go, but you let me know what you think of it, uh, and we'll see. Right now, the bitrate is as high as I'm willing to push it, and I'm also downscaling, so it might be easier for you to for you to have. Especially because the only reason that you, the only way that you would really see it as 1080p truly is if you were watching my screen in my stream in full screen, which almost no one does. So that's why I was willing to downscale it to something. And the sweet spot that I found online after lots of researching is 936p. All right, so that's it. That's really it. And. Uh... And I don't know if uh, if anyone wants, but um, are we? I think that might be. I think that might be a good a good warm up. People are here. Do we do we want to play some Mass Effect? <clears throat> or do we want to look at some TikTok stuff? Who Arglek like is level ninety in Helldivers? Hell, did we all get buffed up since the level cap increased, or did some people who go to level fifty they just got some extra XP over over on the top? <clears throat> 936 is adorably specific quality. Oh, yeah. So 936p is like... It's it's all got to be divisible by 8, right? So it's always like... Um, th th there's a table that you can look at with all of the possible computer resolutions. And there's they like highlight the ones that are divisible by 8. Because that's the one that works best for downscaling. Because if you downscale to something that isn't divisible by 8, it's going to stretch out the pixels to make it fit the screen that you're in. Which is just... Ugh, I'd never do that. So yeah, do you guys want to look at the news, or do we want to go into Mass Effect? Because if we are going to look at TikTok, we're going to look at something important, uh, but it might not be, it's not going to be happy. So if you guys are in the mood to see that right now, then then we can talk about it. Um, but I'm also happy to play some Mass Effect. And don't worry, I know that everyone here is already like aware of everything that's going on, uh, especially in Palestine. So don't think that I'm ignoring anything or like sweeping it away. Like I'm paying attention to it. I know most of you are, so... Yeah, it um, it's okay if we just play Mass Effect. So it's really up to what you guys are ready to do. Once you hit level 50, it basically saved your XP from everything you've earned since. So people who hit level 50 before today will now be a higher level. Okay, well, I was never at level 50 anyway. So I'm still a noob. <sighs> All right. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Wow, it's it's Alferg. What's up? Uh, America, yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <clears throat> well, um, it's nice to uh, it's nice to see you again. Uh, yeah. 
Hey, MJ, do you like Halo? I have Arbiter in my name. I like Full Metal Arbiter because I also like Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> 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 love you, Alfred. No homo. Uh, that's but what I I love Alfred full homo. Don't be a coward. <laughs> Hello, Fi Dan. Hello. Have you talked to me yet? What do you mean? Have I talked? Oh, yeah. I didn't even understand the fucking reference that I was using. Wow. <laughs> I didn't catch that at all! <laughs> I might be the worst person, yeah. Uh, that was very undemocratic of you. Jeez. Damn, shit's going south today, guys, huh? Friends going yeah. at friends, friends plural? Uh, um, gee, I literally did call you Alpha. I was looking at you in Discord. Fuck you. Uh, fr uh, friends in plural is a typo. Just moose went to surgery. Oh, okay. Just moose? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So just moose GPU problems last night. Oh, I'd rather distract myself. That's fair. Also Mass Effect. Yeah, we'll play some Mass Effect. Don't worry, guys. Um, that's why aspect ratios are important because the default screen size is 16.9. Yes, that's why like it's all divisible by eight. Like 16.9 is the divisible by eight ratio. Um, I heard it's Alferg and went, huh? I'm not in the chat. <laughs> you don't understand the meme you created? Yeah, really hammering my interests home. Yeah, yeah, Murica. <laughs> Uh, oh, and then we... Um, Raz, when you read the news, I was assuming you were talking about other things, but Finland had a school shooting happen today. Jeez. Oh, God. Oh, hi, Sylv. A 12-year-old sixth grade. A 12-year-old. Yo. Often the student injured two others. Things like that just don't happen here. Yeah, dude. That's yeah, Finland. That what do you mean? Mm -hmm. That is not normal for us in any way, shape, wow. or form. Wow, 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 wow. Damn. So yeah, uh, Mass Effect, please. No, no, no. We'll play Mass Effect for sure. Also, <laughs> yeah. hello, me, Chrissy. <laughs> Yo, that's rough, Raz. Take care. Yeah, I'm somehow level ninety in Helldivers. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of weird. God, <laughs> what do you crazy. mean there are two patrols next to me and an Ion Storm in progress? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> me, me, Chrissy. Yeah, me, Chrissy. Yeah, specifically. Oh God. Yeah. All right. So now you guys know. Are we? Um. Uh, is is the stream still fine? If anyone has any kind of buffering issues, please let me know. Um. I'm like I said, I'm messing with bitrate and things like that. So. Yep. Yeah. The yep. the art was glorious. Thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you. So I, I, what was I, that I, all about? It. Like I tune in here and there's you talking about like bitrate, like you're doing that meme of the guy like going crazy on the like wall full of papers and documents. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. explaining the um. <clears throat> Uh, I was explaining the, like, what I learned, what I researched this afternoon, because I, I was watching the Helldiver stream and I noticed there was some artifacting, which is basically just pixels, like, bunching together, and I realized yeah. that it was because, um, I lowered the bitrate because people were having buffering issues, but my resolution was 1080p, and the bitrate was too low for 1080p to get through properly, so we were seeing artifacts, so I've now I balanced it people by... to get better internet. I'm scaling, no. It happens on mobile all the time. Like, mobile YouTube streaming is a bit worse than, like... Simply PC. get on a PC yeah. and watch the stream. Yeah, I, so Alferg, Zareeth, Thomas, you guys just want to, like, not be on a phone, maybe? I don't know if Thomas is... Yeah, like, at work, it, but... it, every cashier has a computer, just open in there. Yeah, maybe you, just, <laughs> maybe you guys just want to sit on the factory line where Alferg is and just have a PC there where you can have, have yeah, a like watch. Yeah, like, bring a Steam Deck. Yeah. yeah, it'll be great. Uh, anyway, uh, solutions that aren't ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> well, all I'm doing now is, um, <laughs> is is taking the 1080p raw and then downscaling to 936, which is like the edge of full HD, and then um, and then increasing the bitrate slightly so that it can kind of the downscaling will compensate for the fact that I'm increasing the quality. So hopefully we're okay. Oh, you do have a laptop. I don't feel like figuring out how to pair my earbuds to it, though. Uh, well, there you go. And also, why would you carry a laptop around a factory line with you? That seems uh, pretty unwieldy. All right. Are we down for some Mass Effect? I'm down for some Mass Effect. Let's play some Mass Effect. So it's yeah. episode five today. Let's play a uh, content warning now. We can do some Mass Effect. Oh, I content warning came out today. Just when I decide, just when I announced Mass Effect, I saw this video on my feed, and then everyone started was like, "Content warning is out. It's a new Landfall game," and I love Landfall games, and uh, and and now here we are, and it's uh, it's a little bit irritating that now I'm playing Mass Effect. <laughs> well, I want to play Mass Effect, but 
now that content, content warning is uh, well, out, ne can ne you can, we can do it next stream. Yeah, you have played some, right? Yeah, content warning is basically leave a company with phasmophobia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Super cool, super cool. And it's uh, funny as shit. Yeah. Because and it, it watch very much turns into a power. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you can watch it and save it on your computer as well. Oh, for real? Yeah. Shit, that's And it basically turns into like this found footage game because sometimes I find someone else's camera on the ground. I'm like, oh, what happened here? So I just go check it later and the video is fucking <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> oh, oh we're, yeah, we're doing Kenshi before content warning. I did promise to read. Next, uh, on Thursday's evening stream, I don't know what we're doing on the morning stream, but on Thursday's evening stream, uh, people have been talking a lot about a game called Kenshi, and there is also a Star Wars mod that makes it all Clone Wars, so I will be exploring yet another Star Wars experience in Kenshi, so that'll be fun. I've never played it before, my first experience will be on stream, and we'll see. Where is VR images so you can experience lightsaber combat? Uh, yeah, that'll be that'll be next. When I next have money to spend, I'll I'll put that in. Yeah. All right. Then, without further ado, if you were expecting a dues today, you'll be sorely disappointed. Let's uh, let's play some messy fact. Ah, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, big update for Helldivers and freaking. Malevolent Creek was liberated for like what four hours? <laughs> yeah, and now, and now it's. Bad. I should have realized that that was the April Fool's joke. Liberating <laughs> yeah. Malevolent Creek. Now that's a good they joke. Knew. I think they knew. I I, th I think they were. They definitely... knew for sure. Also, I think for marketing purposes, it makes no sense that they would let us keep it, considering how it's like taken over social media as like the Vietnam of this game. It just feels. It feels foolish to oh to not constantly fight over it. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So now that we're actually playing, like when the game begins, uh, when the game begins, we will. Oh, that's my camera. Kurva. Any full screen application. A language. Pira <laughs> puto. Jesus. Calm down. It's beautiful. Can this okay. hell diver stop spawning right in the thick of everything, please? <laughs> okay. It is uh, hell diver. Stop being thick. Like I've said uh, before, because we're playing around with bitrate, please tell me as soon as as soon as you find that there's a problem. If you find that there is a, a buffering issue or anything like that, then oh. MJ? Um, what's up with the stream? MJ? Whoa, whoa, what's happening? What's happening? <laughs> There's only half the game on the stream. Half the game? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, half the game. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> there you go. We're, we're good. We've done it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, uh, everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think I was about this size. Yeah, it depends. We'll we'll see when dialogue is there because I have it at a perfect place. <laughs> Me too. MJ was really over shy. here playing the, the <laughs> split screen co-op version yeah. of Mass Effect. Yeah, 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 I was playing the split screen co-op. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, the rest of the game is here. All right, so we're gonna give a slight recap. Uh, over the last couple of days, Archangel, whom we found on Omega has been resting. And we have now found out that Archangel is in fact Garrus Vicarian, our good old buddy, who has gone back on his ways, unfortunately, and uh, and who has returned to his life of vigilantism. Um, <clears throat> well, not well, he was usually a cop, but now he's decided to be a cop with even fewer rules. So he has gone to Omega to basically just shoot it up and make sure that there are no like mercenaries or gangs left standing and it's been a great plan because he had a whole team that he was willing to do it with and then one of his team members betrayed everything but betrayed the whole team uh, and he feels responsible for that so we're gonna try and get him to not blame himself for the actions of another person and 
in the meantime, uh, we've now learned, we did also learn quite a lot about Omega. For, ex for instance, that it is run by someone called Arya Talok, who is an, an Asari who came here a little while ago and unseated the Krogan Patriarch who was there before, who is now called Patriarch. Uh, and she is not a nice person. Uh, and she therefore perpetuates I that like and the says that. Uh, that could potentially kill me. What? <laughs> I like the type of woman who could just kill me. <laughs> I mean, she could. Uh, and, Use biotics, uh, let her yeah. be against the wall type of woman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, hello. And that, um, yeah, that will. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's probably that's probably a good idea. So we that's probably a good recap. We found we found Archangel pinning down a bunch of mercs. Uh, we worked with, we then ambushed the mercs and uh, and went to go find Archangel. Learned that it was Garrus and then defended him against all three: the Blue Suns, the Eclipse, and the Blood Pack. And yeah, now we're here. So at this point, we're back on the Normandy. We're going to head back down to Omega to find Doctor Morden Solus. But first, for you, Commander. first we have some people to talk to about getting Garrus back. We're going to start with Joker and see if anyone has anything to say before we get back to, uh, oh, Codex. Uh, before we get back to, uh, Thingy, uh, back to Morden. We know that, we know that Morden and, what's the new starship we got? Oh, nothing, apparently, okay. Wait a minute, I don't know what, no. Uh, oh, yes! <sighs> okay, we maxed out operative. Ooh, now here's okay. a hard choice, MJ. One right, of them so gives now, you 100% she... gone. The other one gives you 70. <laughs> oh, shit. You're right. Damn. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's really shitty, actually. What do you mean? Yeah, that is. Why That's is fun. Agent... No, I don't like this. No. <laughs> okay, so... First, let's have a look. So right now we have sniper time slow down 50% and slow down duration two seconds. So if we increase, a basically assassin further increases weapon damage and focus while in sniper zoom and gives a damage broken. Why back is it still alive? Damage Holy bonus shit. to powers. And then agent uh, further reduces power recharging time, which I don't use. I don't use any of my powers except for the cloak. Blech. You get a and then, and you're just gonna have to work for your part. Yeah, but like, but like a hundred percent Paragon though. <sighs> Plus, not total. That's true. Oh, jeez. So power recharge time fifteen percent, and that'll be nine. That's a big bonus. Holy shit. But the but the sixty percent slowdown is pretty noticeable as well. But that Paragon Renegade from 70% to 100. See, here's the thing. I get more health, uh, less weapon damage, more power recharge time, slightly less sniper time, sh sniper time showdown. It's, it's not that hard to go up with yeah, Paragon. We'll be fine. Like we'll be fine. All right, All right Assassin, it is. Clip that, clip that will be fine. We're going <laughs> to see later. It's going to be yeah. fine. Clip that. Yeah. We'll be fine. Okay. All right, cool. Fine, assassin it is. Here we go. All right, so that's it. And now uh, we actually have, we have a lost operative and we also have, uh, we have to deliver a data pad to Aria. Okay, we're gonna get there. First, let's talk to Joker. Just casually throwing the game into bloody five one aspect, but entirely on the bottom of the screen. Top half of the screen is for wimps. Yeah, let's do that. Let's the do top it that half way. of the screen. As a uh, subway surfers playing and a Family Guy episode. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's got to be subway surfers. Yeah. Okay. Garrus is hey, back. Hey commander, we got Garrus back. That's Yay. great because he was totally my favorite. Eh. That pole up his ass. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect stream camera size as well. Okay. How I are you? Everything's going well up here. We're just having an argument over personalization of my workspace. Server's regulations are clear, Mr. Moreau. Personalization does not include grease on my bridge cameras. <laughs> it's just mad that all its footage of me looks like a dream sequence. <laughs> oh. 
Hmm. You ask again, he's gonna go good for now. Fracture my thumb on a mute, but I think I made a point. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. It for now. See you, Commander. Let's talk to Edie. Yes, Shepard. Uh, no, no, I think That's Edie has everything me. that she yeah, wants to say as well. Yes, Zareeth, love his ass. Now, we've already spoken to Garrus, but we should just have a check-in with everyone else so far to see if they're okay. I want a true-to-source material Yu-Gi-Oh anime. Unfortunately, there's no way it would get the okay in this day. Why? Because it's, like, incredibly inappropriate? Or because... So far, that's what you've been showing us. Okay, I'm, ne I'm never taking this again. It was so shitty. Okay, Garrus gets... Ooh, yeah, he'll get the Vindicator. Immediately, because he someone in turn, they gave me the super easy mode. I mean, the game shit. What do you mean, <laughs> super easy mode? The incisor sucks. What do you mean? I hate it. The incisor's great. It's good if you only want to hit them in the chest, but I'm looking for those sweet, sweet headshots. I don't I want- and it runs out of ammo, delicious. like, it, it- it eats ammo, dude. Commander, can I help you with something? Yeah, let's, uh... How we doing, Jacob? What's your sense of the mission? Mr. Ninja Roman. The same as everyone else. I just want to figure out what the real threat actually is. Hmm. Got no problem with risk. I just need a clear goal. Anything okay. else, Commander? Hmm. What do you think guys? of the state of the crew? Well, we don't have a full complement. We don't stand a chance without the right specialists on side. Anything else, Commander? Yeah, that's true. I understand you made quite a... Miranda and I stopped a Batarian plan to release a biological agent on the Citadel. Oh. That's when I first met her. It took us out to the Nemean Abyss and back. Nice. Save the Citadel like you, but what's the same? A good deeds like pissing yourself in dark pants? Warm <laughs> feeling, but no one notices. <laughs> the whole thing was harsh and good at doing. But I know what I did, and I'm proud of it. Good. We... This is... I mean, this is a great chance to dive into it we don't do we shouldn't do good things to expect rewards or recognition for them good deeds are not done good deeds are done absence of any expectation of recognition you shouldn't be looking for a thank you a thank you is appreciated sure uh and in some cases when someone just like brushes over something that you've done it can make you feel pretty bad but just try and remember why we do good things we do good things because they're good not because we want to be praised for them so if, you, if you're doing the right thing, then that's enough. And that should be enough. It's inherently valuable. I'm glad that Jacob has that feeling as well. So far, Jacob's pretty cool. I'm more interested in just talking for a bit. Sounds good. Have to say you run this ship tight, and we're getting things done. Hell yeah. Keep on track, and maybe we'll figure this out. I hope so. I'm not looking forward to the debrief if it all goes to hell. <laughs> Is there something specific? Or are you just checking in? Don't be Weird, so it's formal. <laughs> oh no. If I say don't be so formal, do we <laughs> is that is that it? Do we just lock in romance? <laughs> uh Um Yeah, let's keep it neutral for now. I heard you were big oh, in the alliance. Bye, Arklack. Figured we have something in common. Oh goodbye, Alfred. <laughs> caught attention and stirred up the bye, That was after the alliance put me on leave though. Didn't drive a Mako through a relay or take down a Reaper, but you covered that. <laughs> oh my Wait, god. The Alliance sideline. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Hey, Jacob, Jacob, Jacob is super, super interesting. Miranda that Cerberus treated like an audition. <laughs> and here I am. What are you doing? What are you doing, Rain? Trying to extract. <laughs> but there's everything. So the Alliance sideline. I mean, that's after... pretty normal for the game, but, you know, yeah. still. <laughs> Job with Miranda that Cerberus treated like an audition, and here I am. Okay, all right, yeah. Let's figure out what he what he thinks about the rest of Cerberus. You don't seem like a results at all cost kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Cerberus history doesn't bother you. The alliance is all politics. Somebody has to take down the bad people. Cerberus keeps that line. I'm on their side. So people might look at someone like this and think, God, Jacob is like kind of a dick. And you got to understand, the alliance does the same thing. They're just not as like completely moralless as as Cerberus is. Alliance, the Alliance at least pretends on the face of it to be about politics, but they have specters, and the Salarians have the special task group, and and like like Asari have commanders, and every every group, like when you put them together, you find groups of 
uh, of, of these different species that all have their methods of achieving things regardless of the laws that they create. So Jacob is, of course, a product of this. Why would he have a problem with this when the Alliance does exactly the same thing? He was literally part, like, I mean, we've said this before, he was literally part of a group that 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 went above the law or at least like under the radar and, and away from, <coughs> that they did like covert operations. They were, he was in spec ops. Like that's already uh, sort of a, a gray area between the Alliance and Cerberus. So this is definitely not a surprise to me at all. It's not, and it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, I think. The Alliance, or rather the, not even the Alliance, but the galactic political scene is very much like this. They just pretend not to be. But the existence of Spectres proves that they, they are willing to do what Cerberus does anyway. They just want to off that responsibility to someone else so that they don't have to feel responsible for it. What was your proudest career moment? Oh, uh, covered this, didn't we? It was after getting sidelined. A Batarian group was plotting to release a weaponized virus and kill the council. Miranda and I stopped it. Damn. Do not ask Kanye West his proudest oh career God. moment. <laughs> Rain, did you get out? After all of that, yeah, I got out, but you want to know what my experience is? Yeah. 1,495 out of 1,500. Oh. Oh. Wait, where was the, where was the experience. five? Where was the no. five gone? I don't know. I hate it when games does it like that. Ah, uh, oh well. <laughs> Strange that it wasn't bigger news. The real work doesn't get publicized, you know that. Mm -hmm. They say it's better that people don't know how fragile came. the system is or how close the bad guys can get. So, it never happened. Like you and the Reaper. And that's why I'm here. And I disagree, of course. I don't think that the public should be hidden from anything. I think that a government's job is to be transparent with its people. And when a government starts being less transparent, that is when we need to be more and more suspicious. When governments say things like, we have information that is in your interest, but you can't know what it is. Like, that, like no, it's bullshit. <clears throat> yeah, you look like you came through no worse for wear. If nothing else, the Alliance trains their people well. Once you live that life, you can't sit around getting fat. Most of us didn't get a Cerberus <coughs> rebuild. They outdid themselves with you. Ask for any upgrades? Something <laughs> you'd like to see? <laughs> no. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, here? No, good. None needed. Damn. I'm, <laughs> I'm perfect, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's go, uh... Yeah, none needed. I didn't really need any. But not because I'm perfect, but like... I, I hope she's not gonna say it like that. Let's see. I'm glad <coughs> enough they restored me to stock. There we go. Couldn't hurt to keep some spare parts handy, though. I hear that. Your job isn't getting any safer. You know, I used to wonder what the big deal with you was. But now that we're in deep, I'm glad it's not me in the spotlight. Mm. There's no hiding, Jacob. Not for any of us. Don't worry. This is exactly what I signed on for. That's all, Commander. I'll get back to my duties. There's a lot to get ready. Okay. So far, still like Jacob. He's a little rough around the edges, but he's um, he's 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 a he's a soldier like he's a soldier like Ashley, except without the racism. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So he's good. Let's uh let's have a chat to. No messages for you, Commander. Thank you, Kelly. Let's go up to the captain's cabin. Let's see if there's anything up there. Yeah, didn't you get fish? We did get fish, and I would like to feed them. Look! You Look, have to feed them after fish. every mission, otherwise they die. Feed <laughs> the fish! So see? I fed the fish. Oh, look at that. Go on. Go on, eat the food. So much feed, Jesus Christ. Good boy. Good fish. Good fish. Yes. See? Oh, I miss having an aquarium. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna shove like an entire bag of fish feed into the tank, and it'll be fine. I'm sure oh, they won't God. grow way too big for the tank. It'll be fine. Don't worry about no, it. No, it's the cleaning. <laughs> All right, missing in action. Very elusive. Ooh, we go, oh, we got Archangel. Damn, that's Aww. such a cool, such a cool uh, thingy as well. Okay, nice. Bird looking ass. <laughs> All right, let's customize the gear. So here we go. We have- <laughs> Yeah, Zarif, yes. We got the visor. Yeah, we have the visor now. Ooh. 
Nice. I like the recon hood, but I think, um, yeah, the visor is going to increase headshot damage. We've got to keep, we've got to use the visor. Okay. Right, let's go with some slightly different colors. Uh, I think we have extra gauntlets. Ah, an offhand ammo pack. Nice. And then my legs, we can have the, ooh, the life support webbing. That increases health, right? Yeah. Like, it definitely matches the, the rest, <coughs> but... Oh my god, the, the butt pads disappeared. <laughs> yeah. No more butt pads. Hey, we're actually, like, wow. armored up. This is great. Zero out of ten, no butt pads. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I like being... Like butt... Now it has, like, butt blocks. Yeah, it's it it makes no, oh, sitting down is <laughs> sitting down is gonna be really weird. We're we're doing like Bug old school blocks. Lara Croft. That's what's happening. Yeah, I was thinking we're going back to the PS One era then. <laughs> 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 okay, so if we I have a Duddles moment that's currently stuck in my head. A Duddles moment. Yeah. Yes, okay, three what is playing. Your, what is your Duddles moment? Content warning: He gets picked up by a monster. He's holding a camera, and what I hear is. The main just gets thrown directly at my head. Your mic did not yeah, enjoy I... that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll recreate it. Hi, I'll He's recreate it. Help me, Chad! Help me! Help me, Chad! <laughs> Help me! So he just gets I mean, I've been in chat. I've been here for like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way that he said it was like, Help me, Chad! That's very help help crap. Me, I need help. Help me. Alright, I like this. That what do you so think about funny. this color? I quite like it. I think it's cool. Yeah, we need to play bad. more of that later. Like... Okay, like, and then... That's, a... that's not what I immediately imagined Shep being like Shepard's collar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But We're it's pretty. It yeah, yeah, it's not bad. I want Shepard's collar? The armor like, collar. I... You'll see. Yeah. When we get there. Okay, let's get back. We fed the fish. Oh, there's a new MJ Scream song, by the way. Oh, really? Uh, uh, Dodos, are you on PC? Can you play it? I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for the chat to spam fish, fish, fish after every mission. <laughs> Wait, um, the one in your server? Yeah, yeah, the JM screen. Also, are you ready? Oh yeah, go for it. <laughs> wait, wait, isn't that the same thing, just like reversed or something? That sounds yeah. like. <laughs> wait, is it? Is it's the same thing, but it's reversed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hi. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, do we have a cat? Ghosting? Do we have a cat? Josie. I can hear his bell. That's the pain You're talking about Jeff? Backs. I have seen information about TikTok that isn't open to the public. Jackson, yes. Yes. I'm talking about him. Brown. Is it a cat or a dog? Do it again. Do it again. Come on, <gasps> yes. Amazing. Very cool. Hey, got a minute? Hello, Kasumi. Not a lot. Honestly, quite incredible. Doctor Chakwa's office, other than to get medical attention. I mean, I hear you shared a drink with her. That's Aww. really nice. I imagine with all that's happened, old friends are becoming a luxury. No. Gabby and Ken would make a great couple. I just doubt they'll ever realize it. Oh, okay. Normandy runs so quietly. I'm not used to hearing my footsteps when I walk. <laughs> I haven't got Come a towel, here. so he's just drooling all over my leg. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Why does he drool so much? Because his face is all fucked. Uh, like a, yeah, you've got a snack one to do. Ah, uh, okay. I'm shipping my family back to Earth. Oh. You can afford that? Cerberus looks out for their own. They're funding the transport for me. It's the least they can do when we're putting our lives on the line. Correct. I I agree with her for sure. They should be they should be bending over backwards to serve the needs of this crew. One hundred percent. All right, let's go talk to Doctor Chocolates because she's probably she's probably hung like a fruit bat <laughs> after the drinking session we had. <laughs> Commander, I turn. very much enjoyed sharing that ice brandy with you, but I hope I wasn't <clears throat> too unprofessional. Brandy oh, no. goes straight to my head. Nah, you were great. It's nice to see you let your hair down. Guess I hadn't realized how much those feelings needed airing. But I didn't give you much of a chance to vent. So tell me now, 
Oh. What do you think? Oh, that's nice. I'm not gonna be private. We gotta we gotta be open with her. She was open with us. Everyone's depending on us. We won't let them down. They just don't make them like you anymore, Shepard. Damn well, right. Promise me we'll share a bottle every year. The next one is on me. <laughs> Love her. Love her. Yes, Love her. Okay. Hey, Rupert. These rations taste different. It looks like you put in more food and less ass. Hello, Miranda. So, um, Commander. Testing out the uh, Liberator Penetrator buff right now. <coughs> Oh, I want to test out the... Because it has full auto mode now, right? Oh, yeah. It's so good now. I want to test out the counter sniper. They, buff, they, they buffed that as well. They buffed it. Oh, can I, I can wait. say Anything Liberate I Penetrator with full auto is good. The crew's working well, mm. and the ship appears to be performing to specifications. I literally just unlocked it, and I'm not leaving it now. All right, let's have another chat to Miranda. Do you have a minute, Miranda? Of course. I'm just finishing an operation report. I'm impressed, Shepard. So far, things have gone exceptionally well. As Cerberus operations go, this is one of the best I've been a part of. Hell yeah. Yeah, let's, uh, let's make this clear. We're not on a Cerberus operation. Girl, we're on my operation. Maybe that's because this isn't a Cerberus <laughs> operation. Not to you, maybe. But I report directly to the elusive man. And I'm here because he wants me to be. A Cerberus so like, if I had a liberated penetrator in the previous maybe mission, it would have been a bit us. smoother. Mm. Only a bit, not much, but you know, a bit. DCS got buffed to medium armor penetration. Gonna be gonna be great against bots. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if it's medium armor penetration, it might even be good against like the armored bugs as well. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Now tell me, why should I give a second chance to Cerberus? You what shouldn't. did Cerberus do that made you so loyal? Hmm. I suppose you deserve to know. Okay, backstory time. Do you remember when I told you how I was genetically altered? Well, that wasn't my choice. My father created me. He's a very influential man and extremely controlling. He didn't want a daughter. He wanted a dynasty. I ran away as soon as I was old and brave enough. I went to Cerberus because I knew they could protect me. That is insane. And an insane... So, we've we've just spoken about how Miranda is feeling incredibly burnt out with all of her abilities. <clears throat> creating this impossible pressure on her because of these expectations. And these expectations are based on things that she can't work on because they're abilities she has. Everyone expects her to just be good at it all the time with no room for improvement. The expectations are just too high. And now we figure out that it was given to her by her primary caregiver. And... And we realize that not only is that expectation too high, it's also an expectation that goes right to the core of her being now. Because if you're a, if you're a child who's growing up with that expectation on you, then that becomes who you are. You, you, you are defined by it. And that is even more damaging. So yeah. So she ran. Okay. Yeah, so how did they protect you? You seem capable of defending yourself. Why did you need Cerberus? My father invested a great deal in his dynasty. It wasn't a matter of just leaving. I knew he would continue to pursue his... investments. Jesus. <sighs> not a child, not a daughter, an investment. A property, basically. I mean, I, I hope I don't need to, like, explain to everyone here how messed up that is. Like, it's, it's horrific. But I think you'll find that there are some, maybe some subtle ways that parents communicate to their children uh, that they they might feel deep down <laughs> that they are, that, that they do like exert ownership over their children in at least some kind of way. Uh, when that is absolutely not the case. You are a facilitator, you are a guide, you are a um, an unfolder of a human being. You are not an owner, it, you are a guardian. You're like a, a, a protector, you know? There's so many other great words. Owner is, means that you are property, and that is obviously what Miranda went through. But yeah, please, um, please don't be this parent if you're gonna be a parent. Don't create a child with biotic abilities that far surpass anyone else and treat her like a dynasty. <laughs> I assume that Cerberus approves of your enhanced abilities? Of course. Cerberus fully endorses anything that advances the cause of humanity. 
Genetic alterations included, but unlike my father and his own selfish reasons, Cerberus and the elusive man believe in a greater good. They mm. see the bigger picture, and I feel like I have a purpose here. The greater good. The greater, greater good. good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, how much do you want to bet Cerberus was probably who made her too? Bro, I, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't remember if that, if that turned out that way in the story. Uh, but that would be pretty sinister. We've already spoken about, I mean, at, at least from what we know now, there is nothing tying her father and Cerberus together. Uh, but, you know, maybe. Hey, Mad Killer has arrived. Good evening. Or good afternoon for you. We're Hello. talking to Miranda before we head Hello. back down to Omega and talk to, uh, uh, go meet Dr. Morden Solis. Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's chat about parents. Who exactly is your father? A businessman. But a very wealthy one. It's ironic. My father believed the first time we've heard in a that. human positive agenda. He donated generously to Cerberus before I joined them. That's how I first heard about Cerberus through my father's connections. Oh, so he did like. Damn. So he did do like. Wow, he was connected to Cerberus. That's very interesting. How are you, bud? What's your favorite Mass Effect game? Oh, it's it's tricky. It's tricky. I like them for different reasons. I never... This is something interesting about this particular playthrough is that I didn't actually play Mass Effect 1 before. I played Mass Effect 2 and 3 probably about 10 times each when I was a kid. And I, I'd never played Mass Effect 1 because it didn't come out like during my time. So I picked it up later, just completely by accident. Uh, sorry, 2 and 3. And I, I loved them. I loved both of them so much for so many different reasons. And uh, then number one came around with the Legendary Edition, which I picked up a long time ago. And before I could, like, get through it, uh, you know, life happened. I got very busy. And then I started streaming, like, a year ago. And I realized that when I got through one of the games, I was like, I should, we should play Mass Effect. Oh, there was Arglax idea, because he's a huge fan of Mass Effect. And... Um, uh, and yeah, I played, I played the first game. You can find all of the VODs on, uh, on the channel. And now we're playing with that same character from Mass Effect 1 now. That was the first time I ever played Mass Effect 1. It was amazing. And now it's Mass Effect 2. And then, and then we'll, we'll move on to 3, obviously. I think my favorite one... Oh. <coughs> I, I'm gonna have to say 3, but it's close. I think my order would be 3, 2, 1. But not because one is bad, just because of like how they develop on each other. I think I don't think three would be nearly as good without the other two. That's why it's difficult to rank them, because the decisions carry through. Like your version of Mass Effect 3 is very different from my version, you know? Because of how different the choices are and how like different they end up being. Which is which is awesome. Like it's 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 such a one of a kind kind of game. So yeah, I, I would say three, two, one, but only because of what the previous games have done to the third one, you know. For the greater good, Shasla signed communist space fish. Cool. Oh, I, I should feed my fish. <laughs> All right, let's let's learn about Miranda's mother. You told me a lot about your father. What happened to your mother? I never had one. Most of my genetic material is based on my father's tissue. His Y chromosome was altered with an amalgam of desired traits from various sources. Jeez. How oh, arrogant wonderful. can you be? The man is completely Ugh. egomaniacal. Just another reason I had to get away from him. This is the most. Uh, this is the most emotional we've seen Miranda so far. She's, um, she's engaging in a really nice way. We are getting to know her. It's great. Okay, so let's, let's talk about her self-esteem then. Talk about yourself like you're just a tool to be used. Yeah. By your father, by Cerberus. Maybe. I like to know where I fit in the world. It helps me find meaning in how I was created. Mm -hmm. You are who you are, Miranda. You don't need to make excuses for it. That's easy for you to say. We've both been engineered for greatness, Shepard. The difference is, you were great before we rebuilt you. I'm great because of it. No! Absolutely not! No <coughs> way! And this is exactly what I was talking about. I, I mean, this is, this, is a, this is a perfect response for Shepard to say. Like, holy shit. It's of course not what defines you. But she was a child when she figured all this out because she was, it was given to her when she was born. So, of course, in her mind, that is what defines her. I literally said Sorry. it, like, a couple of dialogue options ago. Yeah, I just, 
I just said to Syl, which is actually something I just realized. That's this is why Miranda just looks like so like sexy because she's like m genetically designed and also by yes. a fucking egomaniac by a by an dude. egomaniacal yeah. man who had way too much yeah. money and saw his daughter as as his progeny as his as as a property and of course as we know we know what happens when men with too much money uh are uh, sort of interact with you know most women ever and i think um yeah it i mean this is this is it's awful. So I know people, but, I know people go on like, oh my god, Miranda's ass and stuff, but like, yeah, she's like that for a reason. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Which is actually kind of refreshing. Absolutely. Yeah, this is actually a a well, a well designed, sexy character where there's like, mm -hmm. there's a sensible backstory for why she is like that. Yeah, yeah. And and she's not she's not doing it because she's doing it because she is defined by this. She's defined by her body, her abilities. Um, and her looks, because she was designed, like physically designed by her father to be that. And that is all she has. And, and that's what's so sad about this story. I literally said it like a few dialogue options ago that when you're a child and you are taught something, you internalize it. Children internalize everything. Every piece of advice that they get is, is absorbed and taught as part of something that, that they are connected to as a as a whole, as a person. And then and, and then they and then they define themselves by that. That's why it's so incredibly dangerous as a parent. Uh, and you have to be so careful about what you say and what you do around your child. Because they will just pick it up and then internalize. When when a child sees their parents doing anything that seems bad or makes the child feel uncomfortable that child will internalize that and see that as a personal failing on their part. When the parents do something that is good, the child will internalize that and define themselves in terms of that good act or that goodness. That's what children do. They have to because their brain is still piecing together life around them, like in real time. So Miranda being designed in this way is doing the same thing. She has defined herself in terms of... Um, uh, she she is she is defined herself in terms of her abilities and her looks because that's how her father made her but she has inherent value on top of that and she has to understand that damn that line i'm great because of it man that cuts to the bone dude yeah exactly alfred she doesn't know she doesn't know that at all <laughs> 200,000 mirandas already with a million more well on the way <laughs> Uh, when men with too much money, elusive man? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, him too, for <coughs> sure. But, yeah. Yeah, here so, we go. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Personality I, or what makes you great. It's what makes anyone great. Correct. That's kind of you. I'm not sure I believe you, but thanks for saying it. Good. We're laying, we're, we're laying the seeds. All right, yeah, Sylv, what were you saying? Thanks for your time, Miranda. Uh, the fact Any that, time, uh... Commander. She is uh, that she is hanging with the elusive man is because she's familiar with that world. This, even though mm. it is, it com it it continues the sim a similar line of thought that her father had, but it feels more safe. It feels like she is a little bit more in control here. I I think that's because she's had to. It's like a safety mechanism. It's like a, a coping mechanism for her. One thing that she can use to cope with what was done to her instead of treating it like a constant injustice because there's nothing she can do about it. So if she treats it like this constant injustice that was done to her, she's going to be angry all the time. The, the reality is she's not going to be angry all the time. Eventually, if she treats it like the injustice that it is, she will find a way to get through it and process it and be healthier mentally on the other side. But she doesn't know that because all she sees when she considers processing it is pain. All she sees is like, I'm just, I'm just going to have to live my life angry because that's, that's me. I, I was built this way by this megalomaniac and, and there's nothing I can do about that. And the, the problem is she doesn't look far enough ahead because she, it's too painful to, to see that there's a possibility that she comes out on the other side really stable and really healthy. So she finds a different way to cope about it. And that is by defining herself in terms of it. By saying that I am who I am because of what was done to me. Not how I believe you should do it. In spite of what was done to me. And how 
it may not be anything to do with what was done to me. And I think a lot of people tend to use that. <coughs> when we have things that happen to us, we tend to, we tend to personalize them. And then that is the reason that is so dangerous is that we then, we then define ourselves in terms of that thing that happened to us or those series of things. But the real truth is that you were already that person, regardless of whether those things happened or not. You are who you are in spite of things that happened, not because of the things that happened. So yeah. <clears throat> All right, hello engineers. <clears throat> what can we do for you, Commander? Nah. Oh, we did, we did that already. Will do, Commander. Okay. All right, cool. I think we're all done. I think we can go. Thanks for the like, Mad Killer. I appreciate it. Uh, I've been, I've been interested in, in thinking about, um, yeah, this is not a regular, just like, this is not a regular playthrough, I'm afraid. We, we, we get, we get very analytical about it because I, I like media literacy. And, um, yeah, we're going to go back oh. to Omega and look for Morden. The automatons have a new enemy type. Oh, oh, the gunships? Did they finish them? Not the gunships. What's oh, the new enemy wait, type? The big walkers. Oh, the big. at -80s? Oh, yeah. oh, fuck. Oh, oh shit. Oh. Yo! We're dead. We're dead. We're dead. Dude, we're so way, we're screwed. This is this is why they unlocked the, the quasar cannon, and they were like, "Here, use the super powerful thing." And we're like, "Oh, oh, yeah, let's it's do so it." It's so And then, yeah, we're we're cooked, dude. We're cooked. We're just kind of dead, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Look Ooh, at his new shiny. appearance. That's really cool. I'm gonna grab that. And then I think we're looking for Morden, right? Um, yep. Zaid knows Omega pretty well, but I think we might need a slightly... Hmm. Yeah, if we're going into a quarantine zone... Let's take Zaid. Yeah, let's go with Garrison Zaid. That seems fun. Where is Zaid on my ship? Good question. He's on the, uh, the cargo deck. Interesting. I didn't actually find him. Okay, well, we'll go find him next time. I forgot about him. Um, yeah, I- ooh, that's a really cool outfit. Damn! That's very nice. Okay, Turian Rebel. Okay. Mercenary Veteran. Cool. Okay, and then Shepard. Alright, we've got all of their weapons, and we're good. Okay! Ooh, the green- the, yeah, the green and gold. the slums where Dr. Morton Solis runs the clinic. Anticipate resistance at the transport station. I have also run searches for reports on Archangel. The oh. various mercenary groups appear to believe that he is dead. Works for me. <laughs> <laughs> nice! Okay, Archangel's gone. Right, there are a couple of things we have to do first. Did you feed the fish? I you did have, feed the fish. You have, an, you have an order to drink from the uh, lower afterlife yet? No, not yet. But there's a, but why? Is there a special quest there? Okay, we have the, we're going for the professor first, and then, but then we have an assignment. Uh, we have to give the data pad to, uh, to Thingy, to Arya. So let's go to Arya first, tell her about, let's, let's not, let's not tell her that we're traveling with literal Archangel, like, behind us. Like, that, that, that won't be a problem, I'm sure. I mean, she's never seen him up close, so, you know. Okay, here we go. Uh, by the way, stream is okay. Are there any buffering issues? Is there anything that's a problem? So far, so far. Uh, I mean, on Discord it should be fine, but like, on on no, YouTube I'm specifically. Watching. I have the stream. I have the YouTube stream up too. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Fine. Cause, yeah, because I'm looking okay, for like, sure. are there quality drops? Are there are there like frame rate issues? Is there buffering problems? Like, yeah, just it's let me know. Awesome. And I'm watching both the Discord stream and the YouTube stream. So. Wow, nice. Yeah. That's good. Then yeah. maybe yeah, I can I, I push the. Monitors. Maybe I can start pushing the bitrate a little higher. Let's see. Anyway. Famous last words. Oh. Long story short, tempers flared, followed by pistols. <laughs> we all got out, except my buddy Narka. Places like this are slaughterhouses, dressed as nightclubs. I just <laughs> gonna, I just want to say, destroying an outpost with an airstrike is just so satisfying. Oh, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, those, and, just, those and then you hear the explosions. explosions. Yeah, with the fanfare that you've destroyed it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, hello, Arya. What do you need? 
Uh, yeah, take a look at this data pad. This data pad was on one of the mercs going after Archangel. They were coming for you next. Let me see. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Would someone like to tell me how this information <laughs> slipped the net? For the eyebrow raise. <laughs> I'll look into it. <clears throat> Thanks for the heads up, Shepard. Looks like I'll have to do a little cleaning in my organization. I'm just, I'm just making friends. You do that. Okay. I'm just <sighs> making friends. You do that. I'm just making <laughs> friends. I want to go, I want to go down. And we'll go down the other way because we can run through the markets. Because we did pick up some credits. So maybe we can start spending some. <laughs> Fine, fine. You know what? We'll have a drink. What color is this one? Blue again? Yeah, it's blue again. Great. There you go. Oh. Oh, there is something. Oh, shit. I hate you, Arglag. I can't believe you did this. <laughs> I can't believe you did this. What? <laughs> Holy shit. I should have warned you, Shepard. Sorry. What's going on here? You ought to be all right. Just take her easy. Looks like you broke the first rule of Omega. Don't order a drink. Oh, 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 she took a she she took an amino dextrous thing, like something designed for Turians. Yeah. Oh, you were poisoned. Welcome at Afterlife. It's just that one Batarian. Oh, he literally just hates humans. Oh, jeez. No one oh, does thing about it. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because of the, yeah, it's because of the, um, uh, it's because of the Skillion Blitz. Yeah. That bartender tried to poison me. Tried is the word. As far as I know, you're the first human to survive it. Jesus. Me and my friend Jake went there to celebrate our new shipping business. He got real drunk. Oh my God. An hour later, he was puking blood. Dude, this guy needs to. Noted. Let's get back to work. Yeah, we're gonna go back and there. talk to him for sure. Jesus, not for me, like not because I'm like angry about it, but because this has got to go stop. Talk to him, by the way, the no, no, I will, I will, I will. Walking around in this place makes me sick. Mm. People still dying, the strong still exploiting the weak. Nothing I did here even made a dent in this. Why do you think that is, Garrus? <laughs> is it because perhaps you weren't thinking systemically and you were just thinking of treating symptoms rather than the disease? I'm not judging him for 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 doing what he thought was right, but I I, I mean it's like it's spelled out. It's like this is the this is the inevitable problem with vigilantism. As much as it is in itself an act of rebellion, which is which is good, uh, it's not um yeah, it's it's just wait. Are we? MJ and Garrus yeah, are gonna have some go strong down. hate sex. <laughs> oh. Hell yeah. No, 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 no. I think he's I think he's a good person. I think he wants to do good. He's just he he's he's just a little a little much. He's very much like the rest of us who are just a little deluded, like we all were, in thinking that you can change systems from within. You can't. You just can't. They're not a system as aggressive as this one. They're designed to kick you down. So, of course, if he takes out some of the strong people, there will still be these problems. Therefore, Garrus, think a little wider than just, you know, taking out bad guys. Because it goes further Look than that. Yeah. The counter him sniping for 100 grooms is fucking sick, according to Zarif. <laughs> counter him sniping 300 goons is fucking sick. I mean... <laughs> so it's not so much going to be hate sex, but just angry sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Garrus, why don't you change the system? <laughs> <laughs> Do I know you? Engage no, in uh, community uh, work. Uh, here, have a drink on the house. Wow. Make him drink it? Oh my god. I've done that before. Holy <laughs> shit. I think I did that as well. I've played a pure renegade run. Come on, let's go. What do you think these people will do when they find out you're poisoning your customers? Poisoning what now? This has nothing to do with you. Who's next? Turians? You don't like them either, right? Answer the damn question, Forvan. You want a piece of meat? I'll leave your corpse for the pork. Oh. oh. Not 
taking any chances. Damn. I mean, yeah, we we didn't do it. He was gonna shoot us. We were just trying to talk to him. I I feel no regret for that. I think it's a it's just such a waste. Like we we did everything right. Yeah, that's true. We we did everything right. Uh, I don't I don't feel like re regret for our actions. Uh, he he made his choice. One hundred percent. Oh, also we gambled. So yay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm the next thing I'm doing is tactical work. One hundred percent. And then hey, Turian rebel. Okay. Ooh. All right. So we can either go with. Turian Renegade. If it can be fired, Garrus knows how to use it. His weapon and power damage increases <laughs> dramatically. Long hours alone against impossible odds of condition. Garrus' help and kept, oh, health Renegade. and kept his, his power sharp. I mean, we're going with... Renegade. Oh, his, his, power, his power damage goes up either way, so of course we're going with Renegade. 1,000%. I thought you were trying MJ to make a Paragon. <laughs> MJ finally going yeah. with the Renegade option. MJ Let's going go. Renegade, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> MJ hesitating to do Renegade options all the time. Okay. Zaid's expert combat knowledge increases weapon damage even further. Jesus, 50%. Hardened survival instinct increases effective health. Dude, I don't care. We're, we're going weapons, dude. I'm a DPS main. Come on. There's nothing else. You and every other player. Yeah. But we need well we need the tanks and healers, man. <laughs> nah, dude. Not if you not if you deal damage fast enough. <laughs> okay, the Matok, the Geth plasma shotgun, and heavy weapon ammo. Okay, I think we might need we might need the upgrades first. Let's have a look at everything so far and see what we can do. That goes back up, I think. I don't think that I think this goes to the Yeah, this goes to the market. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw something I like. Uh, storm speed. Oh, blood dragon armor. Damn. This is for Dragon Age, right? Yeah. 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 Originally created for Earth's Urban Combat Championship League. Whoa. Wait. Yo, airsoft. <laughs> This set of armor has undergone as much or more field testing than those of modern militaries. It uses a unique proprietary power cell that costs as much as EUCC rookies contract. Jesus. Uh, the armor's mainframe computer adapts to any top-tier Omnitool kinetic barrier or biotic amp, giving breathtaking and error-free performance. The chest and shoulder piece bears the logo of the Edmonton Blood Dragons, and the inside of the armor bears the signatures of the entire team. Ooh! The inside is the signature of the team. When and how it finds its found its way to the Omega markets unknown, but several of the signatures bear messages such as expletive the geth and scratched get well soon. <laughs> uh, this is really good. Power damage by 15 and shield strength by 10. Although if you equip the dragon armor, it changes your helmet as well, right? Like you can't. It does. Okay, cool. So we have to. That one's like an armor set. Yeah, it's like its own set. Okay. Yeah, we're not gonna get that then. I prefer the, the separate buffs. Having a, like the stuff scratched in inside the armor, a uh, lecturer who was uh, doing a lecture lecture at a convention about armors, he oh. had just had his uh, own plate armor done for him, and yeah. uh, it it was more expensive than his car, and he Whoa. had inscribed inside the breastplate in Latin, "Do not tell my wife how much this cost." <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Okay, I mean, I do... I mean, the black hole gun... Sure. We'll just pick it up. Wait, what? Because it's, it's a black hole gun. It is a black hole gun, yeah. Best defense is an overwhelming offense. Peace through superior firepower. Hoorah, Helldiver. Do no harm? Nah, <laughs> do all the harm. Yes, correct. Okay, I think... Um, I mean, the nipple plate... I don't know. It does do, it does a shield delay. I think I'm going to grab that then. We're going to equip it instead of my, my <coughs> normal one. And then having a hack or having, I think I'll have heavy weapon capacity first. Yeah, let's go down and get that heavy weapon capacity. Hey, we got the M490 Blackstorm. Yeah, it is literally a singularity gun. Like it shoots a singularity and then it, it sucks you in and then, and then turns you into jam. That's concerning. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go get heavy weapon ammo, and then 
taking the Matic semi-automatic rifle Not against... for you, because you don't use assault rifles. That's true. Well, I mean, it would be for everyone else. It would be for, like, Garrus and stuff. I think I'll say... Oh, I'm so <laughs> close from the get. I'll, I'll say... Imagine I'll say not giving Garrus a sniper rifle. I do, he, he has a sniper rifle and an assault rifle. Yeah, but default to the, assault, the sniper rifle. Mr. Windsor is an international treasure. <laughs> yes, Yo, Guy I love Windsor Jim. was the dude holding the lecture. Oh, oh, was that the dude? <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right, yeah, we're done. Let's listen to this dude speak again. Yeah, no, I'm good. All right, cool. We're here for Morden. Please show me to Dr. Solis. There's a plague. Nobody gets in or out. You can't keep me out. I live in there. I'm doing you a favor, lady. If you go in, the guards will cut you down. You can't do this. Everything I own is in that apartment. Hmm. Damn, so th it is really a quarantine, like, like, wow, okay. I told you to get lost, lady. The plague has the whole zone quarantined. Nobody gets <laughs> in. I'm human, you ass. Korean does a better job at keeping now quarantine than America did a years ago. Get it. This yeah. thing yeah. Every yeah. Other race out wow, it's been a while. We're not taking chances. Nobody gets in until the plague has run its course. Why are humans the only ones that, that aren't affected? That's interesting. So you're saying the slums are completely sealed off? Finally, a human that can hear. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. You can't keep me out. I'm gonna lose all my stuff. I'm doing you a favor, human. Anybody in the quarantine zone will be dead from the plague of the gangs in a few weeks. Uh, yeah, please, when someone, like... Like, obviously, your, your possessions are valuable, and there are some sentimentality related to the like I'm a sentimental person I love my stuff I, I would hate it if I couldn't get to my house and I knew someone was stealing my stuff but if your life is on the line your life is more important like your life is more important than any stuff please please don't like put your life on the line for like a cell phone or a wallet like if someone wants to take something just give it to them don't put your life on the line for that I didn't think Omega had any kind of law enforcement who gave the order to quarantine the slums Fresh off the transport, huh? <laughs> Arya Tilok calls the shots around here. She's got her little blue hands on every business in this district. And a plague is bad for business. She hired us to keep anyone from entering or leaving the quarantine zone. So you're saying we can't go in? There's a Salarian named Morden Solis in the slums. I've got to get in there to find him. The doctor? Yeah, a crazy bastard opened the clinic in the district a few months ago. Blue Suns weren't too happy when he moved in. I hear Morton's was trying to deal with the plague. I wish him luck, but the area is still locked down. Our orders are to wait until either the plague or the Blue Suns kill everyone. Then go in and clean up. Jeez. Okay, let's find out more about this stuff. Any idea where I can find Morton's clinic? Not a clue. What do you care? The place is quarantined, remember? I would 100% sacrifice my life for my bongos. See, that's an exception. I think your bongos are worth any price. You have bongos? Wait, you... We did a whole stream. We had a bongo, like, interlude. It was great. I wasn't here. What? Yeah. <laughs> Go look back. There was this... I, 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 I leave handy chapters for you to search through. So there's a bongo. There's a bongo server. <laughs> Sad that I missed that. It was for a morning stream, so don't worry. It's probably stupid o'clock for most, oh. most of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tell me more about yeah, this what's plague. this plague about? It starts out as a cough, then you start coughing blood. <laughs> and, well, <laughs> it affects multiple species. Turians, Salarians, Krogan, you name it. Only humans are immune. And Vorcha, if you count them. An if you count them? Down multiple races. God damn. Yeah, Jesus. And it's the quarantine. Wild. Okay. Who are the Blue Suns? Mercenary gang that runs the district. At least they used to. The guys are mostly Turian. I heard the plague hit them pretty hard. Now the whole district is up for grabs. I hear the Vorcha are making a move. The plague can't hurt them. Immune to disease. The Vorcha are more immune to disease? Want to go in there. Damn. I didn't think diseases could cross species barriers. 
Centurions and Solarians can't even eat the same food. Hi, Ash. Right. Most people figure that Hi. it has to be synthetic. Oh, Ash is Somebody here. Hey. Entity that got loose, or the test yeah. here. Yeah, I'm Seeing thinking like this is a bioweapon. to the plague and doing a fair bit of looting. A lot of people think humans made it. <sighs> of course, we're drawing it along species lines once again in a world that is very racist. But there's also like th this is 100% a bioweapon. I I don't I don't think that. I don't think that it could be anything else, but there again, was also the human start that, taking so. advantage of it. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, no, for sure. But I mean, if if I were immune to something, and I was desperate like these people on Omega, maybe I would also try and steal some stuff. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna click the blue "I win" button, and then I'm gonna go through that door. All right, that's how it's gonna work. Are you ready? Listen, you're stuck blue here until the this quarantine's over. That could take weeks. What you really need is to get this problem solved right now. That's what I do. Solve problems. Let me in and I'll get this district straightened out. I'm a car salesman. You think you can fix this? Why not? Quarantine is more to keep infected people in anyway. I'll radio ahead, tell them you're coming in. Wait, you're stopping me, but not them? <laughs> you son of a bitch. You don't have a grenade launcher, lady. Get lost. <laughs> <laughs> for a plague that kills Turians. <laughs> Why don't we ever go anywhere nice? He can he's not gonna die if he comes, it's fine. Uh I mean he, no Garrett. but like I know that I know that he's yeah, no, I'm I'm I am i i do not I don't know that he's not gonna die. So if I were sacrificing for the greater good Yeah, no, not happening. Like if I don't wanna I don't wanna bring him in with a plague that kills Turians. There's no ways. I'm gonna take someone that's human, for sure. We're we're being we're being careful about this. Though it would be very stupid. On the like it doesn't matter what I know in the future. What matters is right now there's a plague that specifically goes after Turians and it might be engineered and there's no ways I'm taking that chance. We just got him back. I'm not losing him again. It's safer to stick with a squad who's immune to For the greater good. It's your call, Shepard. If you need me, I'm not going to let a cough keep me back. Uh, no. That, no, no. <laughs> Do we get to re-pick re the squad or? Oh, yeah, we do. Okay, yeah. No, not happening. I will take Zaid, uh, <coughs> but then everyone else is a human. So we did take, we took Kasumi. We haven't taken Miranda to like combat yet. So let's take, let's take Miranda. And we can give her a combat suit as well. So that's cool. Okay, here we go. Hey, Cerberus officer. Miranda's coordination of the fire team gives an increased bonus to squad weapon damage. Miranda's leadership tactics leave no one behind, giving an increased bonus to squad health. Why would I ever choose health over weapon damage? Look at that. Well, it if you're doubles playing on a it. standard of difficulty. Oh, that's fair, actually. Yeah, because you would go down in like one shot then. Okay, cool. We're all maxed out. Also, I'm going to try the black hole gun. That'll be fun. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. It kind of makes sense though, because humans are the only ones immune. Yeah, yeah. Miranda has a scientific mind, could be used against the plague. Well, yes, them and Vorcha. So you know that's a thing. Also, do did we have a thing about Vorcha? Like, but Vorcha aren't considered smart enough to engineer something like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. They don't have an answer about. They know Vorcha. how to open like a can of beans. You know. A can of beans. <laughs> Uh, um, are there, I want to see if there are Vorcha here. Did we, did we find <coughs> the Vorcha? I don't think so. I don't think we found them, yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry Gareth. After, back. after Omega, I would personally recommend doing uh, Kasumi's like, loyalty mission because you do get a nice SMG out of it. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, let's see. Uh, refined Ezo. That's nice. There's a lot of coughing going on above and around us. I wonder where it's from. I don't hear any. I don't see anyone around. It's just coming through the vents. They just through the. Sorry, walls. That I keep coughing. <coughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> put, a, put a mask I, on. I think I think I just uh, dispelled the uh, the thing that humans are immune to plague. There. <laughs> <laughs> or are you or just you not are... human? Yeah. 
Yeah, we're not Where's your that. lizard face? Ah, Show us your lizard none face. Of you, none of you are wearing helmets, by the way. Yeah, that. Well, we we are known to be immune, so that makes sense. We're all humans. Okay, but but I agree. Might be it is, carriers, it is, though. It is it is stupid. We could be asymptomatic. Imagine carriers. you carry the disease and you just take it to the elusive man. You just fucking. <laughs> 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 you just pop right over. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever have you ever brought um, have you ever brought Garrus here? Uh, well, I, yeah. I you, what happens if you do? He gets it. Good luck in there. <laughs> <laughs> really, that's funny See, as fuck. see, I don't yeah, want that get, to happen. I think he gets sick, but like more immediately cures him when you find him. Oh, okay. <laughs> Vorcha are the space equivalent of rats. Okay, but no, but they can speak and stuff like. Uh, I think there's, and rats even then, are, rats are like super understood, like super misunderstood, intelligent, yeah, emotional are creatures. They are. Oh, oh Jesus Christ! Intelligent social creatures. Not that one. Rats Not me, crazy. like. Very good at being a low rated. Take control as its most basic. Pile the bodies in the street and burn them. Yeah, that, that's yeah. It is. It is pretty wild that that. Um, we have so much advanced technology, and yet, when the going gets really tough, it's pretty it's pretty interesting how so many people will just lean on, uh, like old methods of dealing with stuff. Let's hack a bank terminal. One, two. Yeah, see counterpoints, Arif. Three. Rats are cute. Horta are not. True. Not even being spaces, <laughs> they they breed like crazy and are disease resistant. Okay, no, for physically, I'm sure they bear similarities to rats, but like, but yeah. Okay, who's this? No, oh, aren't they Borians you suit rats? <laughs> Bad enough you infect us with this plague. Now I'll collect the decent settings and wait until I die before you come to steal my possessions. <laughs> Bro. Is there anything I can do for you? Get away from me, human. <laughs> Your kind has done too much already. Uh, your plague did this to me. <laughs> your faint pity is the final insult. I don't like soldiers dying under my command. I need to find no Morden Solace. You don't like the humans looking for the human sympathizer. <laughs> I hope the Vorcher burn Morden and his clinic to the ground. <laughs> I hope you. Zarif, did I? <laughs> Damn it. Damn you. Hey, stay with me. Won't cure the Did I destroy your perception of the Vorta with the existence of scumbag in a Mass Effect server? <laughs> oh no, not scumbag. <laughs> oh, you help me. Why? It's what I do. I don't know if I can find a cure for this plague, but I'm gonna try. Your words sound sincere. <laughs> Maybe it's the fever. A little bit. But as you said, what have I to lose? What do you wish to know? Why are you so convinced humans are behind this outbreak? The plague is too potent to be a naturally occurring virus. Airborne transmission across numerous species, near perfect mortality rate, mm. it had to be created in a lab. Mm. And since humans are the only species not affected, there is only one logical conclusion. I'm not gonna assume it's the fortune. <laughs> Okay, uh... Yeah. I need to find Morden Solace. He has a clinic on the far side of the district. He's taking in refugees, offering to help those infected with the plague. I was afraid to go to but him what before. It is. He is dangerous, mm. but perhaps he can help. How's he dangerous? What makes Morden worse than dying from the plague? The Blue Sons tried to press him for protection money. <laughs> he killed them, stunned them with some kind of... Damn! Then gun them down. Damn! He's not just a doctor. Doctors don't execute people <laughs> and display the bodies as a warning. I think he's a Talarian. So, Damn! Uh, he was with the special task group as well, so he's a badass. We already know that. You were talking about Vorcha earlier. Before the quarantine, the Blue Suns controlled this district. But as their numbers <clears> fell <throat> to the plague, Vorcha moved in. The mm. Blue Suns are fighting to protect their territory, but as the plague spreads, it's only a matter of time until the Vorcha overwhelm them. Okay. I need to find him. Oh, I get here so that we can send before. someone to help you. When I find Morden, I'll tell him about you. 
he has a cure, I'll make sure someone gets it to you. <coughs> Thank you. My time is running short. But at least you have given me a flicker of hope to brighten the darkness of my final hours. I don't want to die. Poetic. <coughs> Whatever Morton is, I will risk it if he can reach me. Whatever... Um... Oh, this this is the first positive interaction we've had with the Batarian. And it has been triggered by us uh, doing something that is good. Just inherently good. It's cost us Metagel, and he's healed. I mean, we got some information out of it, but we could have just gone to Morden and got that information anyway. Like, this is not exactly vital information. And, and we didn't do it for information anyway. We did it because he needed help. <clears throat> And just that one simple action is enough to undo potentially uh, an entire generation, multiple generations, of passed down trauma, both for humans and for Batarians. I'm not saying that one thing undoes everything, but it starts the. It's enough to start the process of deprogramming. So, yeah. Yay. Hey, the Icosahedron is here. I'm not reading that whole thing. I should go. <laughs> the answer is we're going to blow his head off in like five minutes anyway, so it's fine. Uh, <laughs> okay, so are we going to go... Wait, there are two ways to go. How do we... The objective's down there, so... We're going to go here. Ooh. Ooh, I was glad to go here. Very nice. Okay. Hack that shit. Damn. Oh, it goes that way. Okay. Okay. I need some water. So I always find I it funny on, how the water swallows its stupid forwards. I. Oh my god. I am going to grab some water. So I'll be right back. Entertain the chat in my absence. Chat, is this true? <laughs> you want is me this to real chat? The chat? Okay, let me entertain the chat. <laughs> yes? Chat? Is this real? Today, when I walked into my economics class, I saw something I dread every time I close my eyes. Someone had brought their new gaming laptop to class. The forklift we used to bring it was still running idle at the back. I started sweating as I sat down and gazed over the 700 pound beast that was this laptop. It had already reinforced its desk with steel support beams and was in the process of finding an outlet for a power cable thicker than Amy Schumer's fight. I start shaking. I keep telling myself I'm going to be alright and that there's nothing to worry about. He somehow finds a fucking outlet. Tears are running down my cheeks as I send my last text to my family saying that I love them. The teacher starts to lecture and the student turns his laptop on. The color lights on his RGB backlit keyboard flare to life like a nuclear flash. And a deep humming fills my ears and shakes my very soul. The entire city power grid goes dark. The classroom begins to shake as the massive fans begins to spin. In mere seconds, my world has gone from vibrant life to a dark, earth-shattering void where my body is getting torn apart by the 150-pound gale force winds and the 500 decibel groan of the cooling fans. As my body finally surrenders, I weep. As my school and my city go under, I fucking hate gaming laptops. <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about because my gaming laptop is actually awesome. I love this game. <laughs> it treats me so well, and I treat it well. <laughs> no, the chat be entertained, I hope. You, you, the chat is probably entertained by that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wish I had Are the soundboard you not on, my, on my stream deck to, to give you applause, but, but I don't. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was impressive. Thank you. I also know that copypasta. I've read it a few times. The... Um, <laughs> It is true, it is true. The fan gets loud. It does. <laughs> but it depends on what you're doing with it, so, yeah. The best I part is running... when he's, like, piping or doing something, and he's talking, and the camera just extremely shaky, like there's an earthquake happening. 
Oh, that's when um, this doesn't happen anymore now because I have because um, yeah. I have a keyboard on the floor instead of um, instead of using the actual laptop keyboard that like shakes everything. The keyboard's on the floor. You type with your toe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have very dexterous toes. Do you want to see? No. You tried to claw his way out. Can't say I wouldn't do the same. Damn. So they got trapped here. Okay, what happened? Oh, entry one. <laughs> okay. Nobody's even come by to check on us. Never thought the blue suns would turn their backs on me. This group used to stand for something. When I get out of here, I'm gonna make them pay. <sighs> it was probably the plague. This is a yeah, blame it on the plague. <laughs> Sorry, what? He's already infected, my guy. Yeah, definitely, definitely the plague. Oh. He's still talking to me, though. Ugh. No. Good to hear his voice. The company is nice. Nobody should die alone. Damn. Okay, so the plague yeah, so Mass Effect 2 is a lot darker than the first game. Yeah. All right, so this is what the black hole gun looks like. Damn. Yeah, don't waste the demo right. Put that. Wow. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right, here we go. Walk them up. Here we go. <sighs> oh, another door to bypass. Come here, I shall hack you. Still the moon. You, and you, and you. Easy. See, I told you, I'll only make one hacking mistake in this whole game. Hello, is there... Oh, there's extra stuff, okay. Oi. Well, he's dead, so I'm thinking he was infected. I mean, or he starved in here, or he like or died he starved. Thirst. Yeah. How, it depends also, on how long the plague has been going on for. By the way, this this house is about the same size as like, in fact, it might be, it might be a little bit bigger than some of the dorm rooms you get here. Like here in Korea, if you're studying, they'll give you a dorm room, uh, and they'll say free housing, and then it's smaller than this, and you have to do everything in here, like shower, food, everything. Like you can barely fit a bed. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. The wine like shop. the housing. The small, like, the low-cost housing issue here is, is like, ridiculous. The big... Yeah, like, my... Yeah, go my ahead. My student apartment was, like, about... I, I think about that size, though, uh, the bathroom. What, like, there was a bathroom and a foyer. Yeah, yeah. No, there... Uh, no, you gotta have a bathroom, like, in there as well. Oh, is that... Are they gonna shoot us? Yeah, they are. Okay, let's, uh... Let's get some, let's get some cover. Yep, they see us. No, no, they don't. Oh, sick. Okay. Oh, well, thanks, guys. That's great. <laughs> you understand that with me, how it is to fire before you told in armor? No. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm playing a character. In armor, I'm playing a character who doesn't. Like, oh, Jesus. I'm legitimately like, like I was, and I was playing him accurately. Someone who's like itching how to go, go and like he just wants to kill them. How do you go through ODST training and just want to kill shit? Well, but <laughs> did you not, did you not know his backstory? I thought, I thought we went over it. This man has I mean, been driven it's absolutely it's, insane by the Sangheili. It's been a while. It's been like two years now. Yeah, that's true. 
No, dude, man was insane. Of course he's gonna, he's, he's gonna, he's gonna fire when ready. He's gonna fire when not ready. And it's uh, not blow people's heads off. Man. It wasn't <laughs> to the, it wasn't, it wasn't to the detriment of the group, but um, but it was, it it, it was certainly a, a hindrance at times. And um, imagine there's Cypress and Heavy uh, uh, against Wolf's Sword and then Wolf Knight back. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, he, uh, whereas here we're actually being a little more circumspect with this, because Shepard is not insane. This might be useful. Well, MJ's Ooh, trying to say that enemy. he makes excuses to play a murder homo character. Correct. Yeah. Not because I'm good at role-playing or anything, just because I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think, oh, I will not fail a hack. Oh god, it's all the way over there. That, that, good, that, that, good, that. So, when you fail. Nearly did. Gaming Not Jones. that Mass Effect 1 was exactly noble bright either. I mean, yeah, no, it, no, it had darker elements, but I think this is, this is a lot more like human darker elements. Like, not human, but like, it, it takes it down to more, oh, there's someone. More, it's more mature. More there personal. Some people hiding there. <laughs> Look, I can, I can see the top of their little noggins. Oh yeah, it's we, we look fire on them. We look like what they are. We, we look like looters. God, you're human. Oh hi. Saw that door open. We thought those Turians had found us. Nice. Nice. Ever since this plague nice. started, the Blue Suns have been out to get us. They're killing as many people as the disease. Why are the Blue Suns hunting you? We didn't do anything. Pretty much every non-human in the district wants us dead. They think we caused the plague. Humans aren't getting sick, and that's all the evidence they need. God knows how many of us they've already killed. They should be looking at the Vorcha, not us. Ever since the plague hit, they've been taking over Blue Sun's territory. Okay. So now we've seen a Batarian where the Blue Suns locked his door, whether or not he had the plague, and he starved in there, probably. We've then seen Blue Suns people who then did have the plague and they were locked in there for a reason and they just waited out until they died. And then we see these guys and we have evidence of any human just being mercilessly hunted because they're the only ones who are immune and therefore everyone has had it like up in their minds that humans are collectively the ones who got together and were like, yeah, we don't like other races, so we made a plague. And they like made a bioweapon in a human only lab. I don't know. Here's the takeaway from this. Impoverished people generally do not have access to education. Desperate people generally do not have access to education either. All of this is due to all of these like <clears throat> crazy theories and things coming up when people have reduced themselves to their most baser urges and instincts as a result of a lack of education. That is all it is. That's literally the core issue here. You create education programs in communities like this, at-risk communities, impoverished communities, things like this, and then when, when shit hits the fan, this does not happen. You said the Vorcha moved in just after the plague hit? Right after the district was quarantined. Vorcha are immune to diseases, so they're not getting sick. Not sure where they came from. Never saw many Vorcha around before. Sure seemed like they were ready for this. Only nobody thinks the Vorcha are smart enough to create a virus like this. Blue Suns need someone else to blame. Like us. Hmm. We're not saying the Vorcha did it. But this is reasonable doubt on us, at least. You said the Vorcha were taking over Blue Suns' territory? Trying to. The Blue Suns don't go down easy. The plague softened them up, but they still have enough firepower to hold some of their turf. The Turians are getting pushed back. The deeper you go into the district, the more Vorcha you'll see. Unless they see you first. Okay. What else can you tell me about the plague? When did it start? The first cases cropped up about two weeks ago. Nobody paid much attention until it started to spread. Usually takes about a week to kill you, but it spreads fast. Three days after the first outbreak, there were over 50 known cases. That's when everyone noticed Damn. humans weren't getting sick. Then the quarantine came down and everything went to hell. Interesting. Any idea how the victims contracted it? Not sure. Probably airborne. Even after the Blue Suns started sealing victims up inside their own apartments, the plague kept spreading. Yeah, now they just gun victims down and burn the bodies in the streets. Doesn't seem to be helping, though. People are dying by the dozens. <sighs> this is wild. Tell me more about the Blue Suns. 
They're a mercenary gang, mostly Turian. Used to run this district. Kept things nice and stable for the most part. As long as you paid your monthly protection fees, everything was cool. Rates were pretty reasonable. For Omega, at least. Then this damn plague hit. Everyone started dying. The Vorta started moving in. The Blue Suns lost control and the whole district turned into a war zone. Mm-hmm. That's how it happens. I need to find Morden Solus. Oh, yeah. Him. He's got a clinic on the other side of the district. Heard he's taking in refugees now. Trying to help plague victims. Offering protection from the Suns and the Vorcha. Sure. A doctor with military-grade mechs helping people for free. On Omega, grow up. <laughs> Sounds like you don't think much of the doctor in his clinic. The Vorcha tried to muscle in. He gunned them down. Just like that. Pop, pop, pop. Didn't even use his mechs. <laughs> then the Blue Sense heard he was sheltering humans, and they went to burn down the clinic. He killed them, too. Then he went inside and got back to work. He's cold. Must be Solarian Special Forces or something. Correct. He inf he actually was. You can't stay trapped in this apartment. If you get to Morden's, you might at least survive until the quarantine ends. Are you nuts? We'd never make it. The streets are crawling with Blue Suns and Vorcha. We don't even have pistols. Besides, I'm not risking my life on a rumor that some Solarian might offer me sanctuary. Come on. It's better than okay. waiting here for them to get to you. Morty, yeah. Morty's face was based off of um, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood? Yeah. He's the Salarian was... Clint Eastwood. His face okay. was based off Clint Eastwood. Incredible. Amazing. I know you're scared, but your only hope is to get to Morton's clinic. I'm going to be under fire from the Blue Suns and the Vorches, so I can't take you with me. But I promise you this. I'll do what I can to leave a safe path oh, for you to Camera follow. pan. It's risky, but I think it's your only chance. Okay. You're right. We'll never make it if we stay here. We have to try. We'll wait here for a while and give you time to clear the way. Then we'll head for Morden's clinic, if we're lucky. Maybe we'll meet you there. I hope so, because, uh... You're not going to have any supplies left here when I'm done with this place. Uh, you forgot to steal from the safe. <laughs> you can steal from the safe? Uh, on the behind him. Oh, for real? We'll wait here hey, you hovered over here. Oh, and look! Walk away. Bye, guys. guys. <laughs> You're not going to need those. It's fine. I need them more <laughs> than you. Okay, so... We've now done that. very safe if you can just open them up and grab them. Yeah, yeah they don't even stop you. It's great. <laughs> okay, so I think that is the way down to where wherever Morden might be. Yeah, it does take us back. So why are you wearing like green armor? You look like you're wearing some Mountain Dew ad. <laughs> I'm a Mountain Dew like ad. I do too. Because I think the the green and gold. Um, I didn't realize what it was initially until I took a closer look at it, and it's actually the the colors of the South African rugby team. So I mean, so that's uh, it's, not, it's not bad. Yeah, <laughs> it's just unexpected. For it's very what lime. I usually go with, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's that, lime. That's what I meant with like. Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I meant with like uh, not immediately the colors I'd associate Shepard with. Mm, 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 yeah. But it looks good. No, I might next time I play through, I might go for like uh, just equip Shepard in like trans pride colors. Yeah. <laughs> what I what I use what I do is usually just match the environment so it's more camo than you know. Ah uh, yeah yeah well, I, might, I might do that too yeah depending on where we're going. Okay all. Oh, incoming. Oh, oh okay. You're being a real Robin Hood and you're in Yeah that's true. Yeah. We got some oh oh cut yeah. Oh. <laughs> Come here. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Everyone okay? This fight on insane yeah. difficulty is a fucking doozy, but <laughs> I, I can imagine. Alright. Oh, wow, there are a lot of them. Here, have that. Wow, that didn't kill you? Damn. I didn't even kill Oh, it's Varen! It was a bit better. Hello. Hello. Jesus, how many are there? Do we just keep fighting until they go down? Oh! You gotta push him. Oh, we're pushing him back. Okay. Hello? Hello? 
Oh, there they are. Oh my, oh my god. Ooh. Right. Target that awesome. bad boy, please. Uh, hit him with a warp. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my cloak for once. And... <laughs> That's just the beginning! Oh, Jesus. Oh. Okay, we gotta close it here. We'll do Boink. Down. Yeah, the Krogan's gone. Oh! I pulled it, the I pulled it down. There you go. The Angie. Can we shoot no, one of the, those, like, not the Krogan. Oh, there we go. Take that down. Loud and clear. Ready? Easy enough. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even pick Kroger in gameplay where Laura He does he does actually regen health, it's just slower on this difficulty. It seems level. we've crossed into Vorture territory. Yeah. The blue sons have given up a lot of turf. Just what I like to see. <laughs> okay. You pick up that ammo. Nice. Yeah. That was nice. Good work. Wasn't too difficult. I mean, I am playing on normal, so. Okay. So we want to go here first, and then there was a place to go upstairs. We're gonna look around, see if there's anything of value here. Yes, there is. And here. Oh, another. Aha! A different human encounter. Hello. Make a save, just in case it goes hostile. Yeah, a real Robin Hood you are, indeed. Hey, what did I say? We found this stuff, it's ours. Ah, forget it. Nothing but junk in here. This place is worse than the last one. What are you doing in this apartment? Did you kill that Turian? What, the guy <coughs> on the floor? Nah, the plague took care of him. We're just here to take a full accounting of all his worldly possessions. <laughs> Ew. Now, here, you know, here's the thing, right? I don't like looters, like, I mean, they're not exactly being nice about it, but desperate people, right? I have no right to judge these people, so I'm going straight back. Do you know a Solarian named Morden Solace? Yeah, I know him. Got a clinic right around the corner. Take plenty of ammo if you go that way. It's crawling with blue suns and Vorture. And it's also incredibly hypocritical, considering how much we loot from the dead and how much we go, <laughs> um, how much we just went through people's apartments as well to take stuff for ourselves. Like, yeah. <laughs> I have no, Weird. not a leg to stand Weird. on regarding looters. We're the video game main character. Yeah, of course. For us, it's great. Rules for me and not for thee. That's how it works. <laughs> what else can you tell me about the plague? I don't know. Started about a week ago, I think. Aliens started dying off left and right, and they quarantined the district. Figured we had to look out for ourselves. Started scoping out some apartments, taking what we could carry. Never really found much. Kind of a poor neighborhood, you know? I have, uh, I really, I'm enjoying this entire atmosphere so far, since we're, you know, talking about the media literacy of it all. Uh, one of the ways that they paint the atmosphere quite nicely is how every person you talk to has a very different take on how the play works and who's affected by it and everything. Like, it's all, you start to piece together some things based on people's opinions, but everyone's opinion is communicated very differently based on the personality of the NPC. And I think that's like... That's very, you can ask them the same questions and you'll get very different answers. And I really like that. It's a very, very yeah. nice way to paint that exposition for us. It's great. Doubt the Turian has any family to take said worldly positions, possessions. So really it's just gonna collect dust. I mean, yeah, exactly. And also these people are poor. Like I'm not gonna judge poor people for taking something that will help them survive. These people, I mean, it's not, it's not like some these are two like business moguls who are coming in like making sure that they can get like an extra pack of cigarettes or something. No. <clears throat> what do you know about the Vorcha? The Blue Suns used to keep them down. But with all the Suns getting sick, the Vorcha are making a push to take over the district. I eh, don't know who's gonna come out on top. We just want to stay the hell out of the way. Good plan. Tell me everything you know about Morden Solus. That guy is crazy. He'll patch up a gunshot wound for free. Then kick your ass and throw you out when you try to grab a few painkillers. <laughs> be honest, man. You kind of had that coming. <laughs> no way he's just a doctor. No doctor puts down a Blue Sun squad like that. All I know is if you go to his clinic, don't cause any trouble. Well, that's the plan. The Blue Suns control this district, right? Well, they used to. Before the plague wiped half of them out. Seems like it won't be long until the Vorture finish him off. Yeah, I'm kind of sorry to see him go. 
Blue Suns ran a tight ship, kept the district in line for the most part. Okay. Uh, when, you know, when there's a complete absence of authority, and I'm not saying anarchy, by the way, because that's one of the most, like, misunderstood schools of thought ever. But when there's an absence of authority in a place full of poor people who have been completely disenfranchised and exploited for their whole lives, then yeah, any authority will do. We need to get <clears> going. Well, stay here for a while. Get some rest. We got a big day tomorrow. Just Still like with Archangel, they really are... Special cleaning services. <laughs> nice. Just like Archangel, they really are hyping Morden up. Yeah, everyone is. And it's the same, yeah. In fact, yeah, great, Raz. Um, just like we heard with Archangel, uh, we, we're hearing this foreshadowing. This entire area is literally just for us to find... Just just setting up the character of Morden. And, uh, and how scary you know, he is, apparently. Omega would look much better if they had better lighting. <laughs> Wait, what, what do you mean? The, the, the lights that are placed are very dim. Oh, yes. No, that's true. I mean, I think, I feel like that's purposeful, right? Is that, like, yeah. <laughs> it's meant Design to be. Design-wise, yes, but for the people that leave here. Ah, yes. No, no, for sure. <laughs> I think, I think everyone has just constant depression down here, for sure. I mean, look, you, you live in a place where you never see oh, the sun because you live on a space station and there's no attempt to, like, to like re to, to provide you with any kind of UV anything, so all of these people must I live be on a space dope. station. I rarely see the sun. <laughs> I just live in England. <laughs> yes, and and all of England gets seasonal affective disorder no, every I'm year. Just... England is a space station. <laughs> so we've held that. I think Yeah. Oh, have you fought the have is you fought the eighty eighties yet? No, 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 no. I think there's a new feature. So. Just gonna... I'm Okay. Um, cool. Something in Norway. missions you get bloody torn up okay. and shit, right? Yeah. Y yes. Okay, we're looking <laughs> in Nomai. Hang on. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> Again, wow. like, like, you stay bloodied and torn up inside That's the ship. Great. Wow. That's great. That's fucking great. If that is something that you want to see, join the Discord <laughs> and go check Nomai. <laughs> Like, I'm just walking around my okay. ship right now with my cape torn up. I'm covered in blood. That's like, amazing. Hello. We are in. I wanted it. Uh, we have found the Vorcha. Let's read about him. The Volus, although they resemble a mammal reptile cross, the Vorcha have no terrestrial analog. They are humanoid in form, but Vorcha have clusters of non differentiated neoblast cells. Whoa. Like those of Earth's planarian worms. worms. Damaged Vorcha cells mature into specialized structures to alleviate injury or stress. Transformations include thicker skin following injury, oh. lung adaptation for barely breathable atmospheres, and stronger cardioskeletal muscle under high gravity. Skull capacity and brain size do not change, and Vorcha rarely make more than one somatic overhaul. Okay. Vorcha assault each other frequently causing their young <coughs> to gain strength, intelligence, and resilience. As a result, Vorcha see inflicting and receiving pain as normal communication. Few Vorcha study professions, in part because their average life expectancy is only 20 years. Because Vorcha can Jeez. eat and breathe nearly anything, they can live almost anywhere. But racism prevents them from integrating into most societies that dismiss mm. them as vermin. They have few employment options beyond Krogan mercenary bands. Who we'll just probably use them as like cannon fodder. Yeah, it literally just sounds like they are the they're, they're like almost even worse than the Quarians in how they're in how badly they're treated by the rest of the galaxy. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It just yeah. it just sounds like they're Yeah, it, it really just sounds like they're the they're the butt of every galactic joke. <clears throat> Alright. It's Morden's clinic. No funny business once you're in the clinic, unless you want to deal with those Max. No, no, don't worry. We just want to see Morden. Oh. Okay. Whoa, weapons locker. Hi. Morden's around here somewhere. Uh, go talk to him. We need all the help we can get. Sorry, too busy to stop and chat. You should go find Morden. Okay, we got the right ah! Oh, why, why, why? <laughs> I love the, I love like the thing of a receptionist, right? <laughs> 
receptionist is there to like handle work. Yeah. While the while while the main doctor is busy. Yeah. And they're telling you to talk to the main doctor who is treating who's, who's all these patients. <laughs> Hello? The I think the receptionist is too busy. Receptionist, uh, do your fucking job. There's <laughs> There's one there's one thing that will tip me off about this and that is that um, the dude that's guarding the the lift says he would radio ahead and let us know we were coming so maybe he radioed these guys but I don't know still you right they yeah, should do their job the this clinic is a sanctuary if you're looking for trouble go somewhere else yeah 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 yeah, yeah. on our way here we saw humans looting the apartments of the dead it made me sick I didn't realize how good things were in the district before the quarantine. Never thought I'd miss the Blue Suns. I didn't think this clinic would be crawling with so many of your kind. I would have thought twice about coming here. Yeah. Oh, damn. Here, we saw humans yeah, the of the dead. Morden saved my life. Not that I owe him everything. Morden says you humans aren't to blame for the plague. Why aren't your kind getting sick? Hey, we have a we have someone in our favor. Not all humans are bad. The volunteers here have been very good to me. Thank you, sir. Aww. All right, here we go. Professor, we're running low on toxicity. Use melanerin. Plenty of oh. it. <gasps> causes cramping in materials. Supplement with butemerol. Melanerin butemerol. Got it. Senazine is the catalyst. Bonds to genetic markers. Hard to find. Expensive to mass produce. Why not have Lacor? Too unstable. In they inhale. Demazine, better option. No, no, no. Demazine toxic to humans. Not an option. Not an option. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely autistic like all celebrities <laughs> i'm pretty i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure he was intended to be like seriously autistic is he yeah. acoustic <laughs> i think um yeah i i definitely think I definitely, I definitely think he was meant to be the the sort of uh the one whose brain works a little differently like definitely so, Zarif, not... you said ATAT spoiler, my beloved, which I didn't say there was an ATAT. They said it. I said there's no enemy types, plural. I haven't spoiled the rest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Hello, Morden. Oh, should we? Can we steal things oh, first? Give, yoink. Me your, give me your stuff. Hang on. <laughs> I just want to make sure we have everything before we talk to you. <clears throat> okay. Oh, medkit. Nice. Are you guys ready? <clears throat> I'm sure he doesn't need it. It's fine. Are you guys ready to, um, uh, even among Solarians, uh, MJ, he talks, MJ he talks did, fast. but I haven't seen, I haven't played me. until the, I, I haven't played before the patch. So I have no idea. The, the, there is I saw the more leaks, there. We um, had to be revealed. I saw the, I saw the leaks, um, like months ago that maybe something would be coming. <laughs> And that's just one of them that I'm really excited for. Also, are you ready to speak circles? to my <laughs> <laughs> to my to one of my favorite characters in Mass Effect? I love him so much, yeah. Doctor Morden Solis. Professor Morden Solis. Listen, look at how he's introduced. Hmm. Don't recognize you from area. Too well armed to be refugees. No mercenary uniform. Quarantine still in effect. Here for something else. Vorcha, crew to clean them out? Unlikely. Vorcha, a symptom, not a cause. The plague, mm. investigating possible uses as bioweapon. No, no, no. Too many guns, not enough data. We're letting him speak. Soldiers, not scientists. Yes, yes. Hired guns, maybe. Looking for someone. Now yes, we will. Yes, but who? There we go. Morton. Relax, Morton. I'm Commander Shepard, and I came here to find <laughs> you. I'm on a critical mission, and I need your help. Mission? What mission? No, 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 no. Too busy. Clinic understaffed. Plague spreading too fast. Who sent you? Now, the reason if I interrupted him... you a renegade interrupt, she goes, Oh my god, well don't you just shut up? <laughs> so, there's... There is... Um... Uh... There is, like, one... There's a reason that I interrupted him then and not before. Before, uh, he wasn't spiraling yet. Uh, he was still trying to work things out. And by the time that the Paragon interrupt came up, uh, you could tell that he was kind of he was kind of losing it and getting a little lost in the source and I just was here to gently guide him back to why we're here because he was losing he was losing track of like basic like the focus um, and this is a really good way of describing of, of introducing the character like Dr. Morden Solis 
every Salarian that we've met thus far uh, does speak a little bit faster because they live shorter and they have to they have to prioritize you know getting things out there and they also process emotions a lot faster as well Morden is amongst a species of fast talkers is a fast talker amongst a species mm-hmm. of quick thinkers is a quick thinker like he's he's a genius among geniuses and that is very effectively introduced here you might look at him um a, a sort of less empathetic person might look at him here and think god what like this is pathetic he's very clearly um uh he, he's he's very clearly just you know lost and and his thoughts have thoughts have thoughts but the truth is he's ju- his brain just works really 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 fast and um and sometimes it runs away from itself and there's nothing inherently wrong with that <clears throat> okay uh, you'll also know that you'll you should note that within his dialogue he is making a lot he's doing his best to preempt almost everything that comes up so every possibility that we might be here before even asking us, he's trying to preempt before we've like stated why we're here. And more than like think... bursting at seams, waiting to say something. Like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love think... the camera work while Morden was talking. By the way, <laughs> yeah, very fast, and it cuts very, very quite hate. frequently. Where, wherever he looks, it cuts. It's a very purposeful indication that we, the 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 cinematographer wants us to be like kept up with the pace that his brain is moving so that we f- so that we also feel a little put off balance as well but the trick with yeah, morden snap, is snap, to just snap, kind snap. of yeah exactly the trick with morden is just to kind of let him go on a thing and then kind of slowly bring him back and keep it going it's um yeah the 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 biggest mistake we can make with someone like morden is is uh, is to behave as though he is um some kind of an unrefined, childish kind of character. I mean, he, he is a full person. Uh, his brain just works a little bit differently. It's a covert and privately funded space is also group. East Clintwood. Related to playing. <laughs> Doesn't affect humans. Human-centric interest. Few human groups would know me. Equipment suggests military origin. Not Alliance standard. Spectres. Not human. Terra firma, too unstable. Only one option. Cerberus sent you. Unexpected. <laughs> okay so so he <laughs> so he ver- I, lo- I love the camera work it's so funny so he very clearly um, is is good at extrapolating data this is what's happening here so he is he, he takes he, he makes deductions based on data that he has around him which is really good this is Morden is a really great lesson um, in uh, in, in exploring a lot of possibilities before you reach a final hypothesis. Um, and I think he still kind of takes a reach because he's not 100% sure that Cerberus sent me. I mean, he believes he's 100% sure, but really, you know, he's he's not. But his guesses are so educated because he's thought about them so deeply, even though it's only taken him a few seconds to think about it. And that's still just as valid. Uh, and I think the lesson here for Morden, uh, one of the lessons is to spend time but not too much time analyzing possibilities before you make a hypothesis uh, and and make sure that you have all the variables like he does you'll see that he runs through a theory and then he says no wait but that and then he tries another theory and he says no wait but that however another kind of another way that he could just circumvent this entire issue is just asking us who sent us rather than trying to figure it out himself and that yeah so it's it's like it's a balancing act you're very well informed how did a Solarian scientist hear about Cerberus? Crossed paths on occasion. Thought they only worked with humans. Why request Solarian aid? Uh, yeah, we... Hmm. Because... Collectors. I'm on a mission to shut down the Collectors, and I need your help. Collectors? Interesting. Plague hitting these slums is engineered. Collector is one of few groups with technology to design it. Our Whoa. goals may be similar, but must stop plague first. Already have a cure. Need to distribute it at Environmental Control Center. Vorcha guarding it. Need to kill them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Need to kill them. Why? Um. Okay, so he so he found a cure in our absence, which is quite cool. I think it's a subversion of expectation 
uh, narratively here that, you helping him make it that we would help him make the cure. Yeah, he's just like, nah, I've got it. We've cured the we've cured the plague. We just need to get there, and it's quite dangerous. So, our job is to help him get there. But we would be incredibly foolish if we thought we were in in anywhere close to the same league as Morden Solus regarding like cure creation for a plague. <laughs> so it does make complete sense that he's made this before we even got there. I'll get in. So Alfred makes with an amazing shot. point. Oh yeah. Sorry. Hold on. I'll, I'll read that in a second. Oh, something has that been shut down. Troubling. Forja have shut down environmental systems. Trying to kill everyone. Need to get <sighs> power back on before district suffocates. Here, take plague cure. Also, bonus in good faith. Weapon from dead blue sun's also, arms. Also, come in handy against Forja. <laughs> One more thing. Daniel, one of my assistants, went into Forja territory looking for victims. Hasn't come back. <laughs> oh, the worry in his eyes as well. He shows a, a range of emotions even. Yes, Alfred made a good point. Uh, you could lie. The data that he extrapolates cannot lie. That is a very good point, yeah. I'll talk about the uh, the word interpolate versus extrapolate in data. It's a very different process. Uh, interpolate refers to something that is inside, and extrapolate refers to something that is outside, internal and external. When you extrapolate, you get a much more worldly, holistic perspective of something, but when you interpolate, it's really only based on things that you know, uh, but or, or things that are like like more internal for you personally but extrapolating something and and putting data together based on external factors can give you a much more accurate picture of what's really going on which is what Morden does a lot it's the it's the same very similar words are inducing versus deducing inducing is something that um that you bring about based on your own like biases and personal beliefs deducing means looking around you at the world and then making a call based on the things that you see around you and Morden does deducing and extrapolative reasoning and deductive reasoning, which is way more valuable, way more accurate, way more holistic, uh, very good way to look at the world, for sure. He's basically alien Sherlock Holmes. Correct. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. If I see him, I'll do what I can to help. Thank you. Told him not to go. But he's smart. Bright future, I hope. Aw. Okay. I found a Batarian plague victim near the entrance to the neighborhood. Can you send someone to help him? Hmm, risky. Blue Sun's Vorcha still battling, district not secure. See what I can do. I love him! I love his... I just want to listen to him talk all the time. And yeah. also, yeah. Uh, it, it, it is worth listening to all the words he says. Like, it's, it's really tricky. It's easy to turn your brain off, especially when he's talking really fast, but he's worth listening to, for sure. What can you it's tell also me probably about one of the play? deadliest people in the galaxy. Mm. Oh yeah, design. for sure. Not, not just because of the combat training. Purpose seems experimental. Destroys yeah. respiratory systems with harmful genetic mutations. Oh, okay. Makes sense to avoid humans. Unnecessary to force mutation on human genetic structure for sake of variance. Mm. <laughs> okay. And also, he yeah, did why? mention he did mention the Vorcha as a, a symptom and not a cause. Which means that they are just capitalizing on something that existed mm -hmm. without them. <laughs> So, yeah. Unnecessary mutations? What are you talking about? Possible goal of virus. Testing viable mutation levels in various mm. species. Horrific, but feasible for collectors. Humans known to have oh, diverse so genetic background, wider range than other sapient races. Makes sense as control group. They're the control group. Oh, my God. So, if this is connected to the collectors, holy shit. We're the con That's the reason we're the only ones immune. Because th we're the ones they want to target. Oh, humans have wow. more differences about them between different yeah. culture groups. That's very interesting. Okay. Which is right, something let's... I find really uh, lazy world design when it's like <laughs> humans are a mass was... of different cultures and then aliens yeah. are monoculture. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna mention that. Better. I think Even it like is interesting like you know. I think yeah, it, it is usually like it is a sign of a human-centric world that was built where humans are the most like genetically advanced or the or the most genetically complex or diverse when it's very it's highly likely that Asari or or Turian or whatever are are also you know as genetically diverse I think yeah I definitely think that comes from just the idea I think Mass Effect was definitely designed with a human-centric perspective I mean this entire game we're working for human supremacists so it's definitely like we're constantly talking about humanity and I guess with like from a classic sci-fi perspective, this is fine. But I do really enjoy the sci-fi stories where where they explore more genetic diversity with other species as well. And I think there is a there is a place for sci-fi out there where aliens exist that look 
like nothing we could even imagine. And yeah, they um... speak or or behave in ways that we can't perceive. And I mean, Mass Effect already has a little bit like that, but you know, you get what I mean. There is an official, I can't remember what it's called, but there is like an official theory or something where like, even if we found alien life, we might not even recognize it as life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. we might we might see like rock back. formations which were actually created but we think they're just natural but it's mm. actually like a fucking city you know yeah yeah exactly like, it could be a exactly. full-blown city but it just looks like you know a canyon yeah. with some weird hills I think like, we, some hills. We'd, we don't know what we would be looking at if we tried to if we if we actually came across alien life i don't believe that um I, yeah like ash said i don't believe that we would even recognize it as alien life which actually comes up in the game the invincible which would... you should play i'm sure oh oh okay yeah, Arglar? I would... I was going to say that hell that with me. If an oh. alien came to Earth, <laughs> I would kill it. <laughs> I know in sci-fi, most alien races tend to be uh, monoculture, but monogenetic too, that's new. I think... I don't think it's monogenetic. I just think it's less genetically diverse than humans. Uh, and I think that is part of the... It's just part of the human-centric story of Mass Effect. Like, there are other aliens around, but you are a human and therefore the story is centered around a human it's easier for us to relate to human issues so yeah it's um i i do think it holds it back in many ways but yeah, you know, there's room there's room literally, for growth in newer installments literally look at any of the alien races in mass effect none of the like npcs or characters look that much different than each other than like yeah yeah, yeah 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 the the sort of random alien npcs three look very, fingers look very to just great yeah. legs yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, even then, just like look at the, just look at the, like the faces, like mm. all the Torian yeah, the males. The facial could be, models like, will be very similar. You know, they do uh, have a facial shape difference, though. I think, they do, but not, but like, it's not as much as humans. everything. It's yeah, mm -hmm. it's yeah. nowhere near as diverse as yeah. the humans. Our point is just that there's a clear focus that this is like a human-centric story. But yeah, what do you know about the Vorcha? Cowardly, opportunistic scavengers. Not tactical Damn. or aggressive. Scale of attack unusual for them. Suspect Vorcha working for collectors. Distributing oh. plague, collecting data. No proof, but theory fits evidence. Hmm. Um, no, I think okay. that's one of the things that threw me off when playing Andromeda. Oh, really? I don't think they had the um different head and face shapes for each character. Seriously? But everyone had the exact same model, except just different textures tape on the top of it. That's wild. That's a super misstep, in my opinion. Um, as far you as you know, culture, how they made the um, how yeah. they made it turn using Andromeda. No, go ahead. So, um, because you shared skeletons, this game you shared skeletons, right? This is like technical perspective. Mm -hmm. Everyone used the same skeleton with the same animation sets and everything, right? But they managed to make it like vague enough so each mm. species can have their own face and stuff like that. Now, for some reason, in Andromeda. Turians is a Salarian skeleton. Because they oh. made separate ones. And so do Krogan. Interesting. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the that's why they look so lanky, right? The Turians and Andromeda. Mm. But um, when you try to export the Turian head to like a 3D program like Blender, yeah. their head morphs into a Salarian shape. <laughs> <laughs> so what they do in game and the reason why they probably don't have different face shapes it's like a facial expression that they have going on that just morphs the head into a turian head <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Uh, oh yeah so that's a little fun <laughs> yeah that is a fun fact all right as far as culture really lazy to me it could <laughs> yeah no it's as, as i said a huge misstep it could just be that we don't interact with enough civilian groups outside of the Citadel, which is another good point. I think um, it, it might be similar that we are only looking for human-centric differences in genetics when actually the race, the other species of Mass Effect could be genetically diverse just in ways that we can't perceive because they're alien. So that could be a thing as well. But again, if we can't perceive them, then it does once again mean that the story is still very human-centric. So still, uh, it still supports the point. But is, is that Alex is a good in the point. Chat too. Because I have a relevant Doctor Who. Oh no, I don't think I don't think they are. Alex, so make yourself known. We recently watched um, like the first episode. The Sontarans featured in in like. Um, okay. 
with David Tennant. Mm, and mm. Um, one of the, one of the characters like sees the Sontarans for the first time. They're a clone race, so okay. naturally they look very similar. Yeah. And they're like, and this character's like, how do you tell each other apart? And the Sontaran literally just turns to him saying, like, we say the same thing about humans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, mm. absolutely. <laughs> We look for, and, and humans do this in real life as well. We, we look for, if you have a, if, if you grow up in a very sort of, um, what is the word? Homo... homo uh, <laughs> Um, oh, it's, uh, like, 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 like Korean society is very, uh... Homogenous? Homogenous, that's the word, yeah. So, if you grow up in a very homogenous community where there's not a lot of where there's a very sort of stable genetic blueprint, essentially. Like the Scandinavian blueprint, you know, like the, the stereotypical thing, or the East Asian stereotypical thing. A lot of, um, uh, when, when you are first exposed to how different, like the range of genetic differences that humans can have, uh, when you see someone who comes from far away, it can be, it, when you see a group of them, rather, it can be difficult to parse differences between all of them, uh, which is where the stereotype you XXX all look the same to me because we are looking for the same genetic markers that we see in our own communities with, with which those people might have all similar and their differences come in completely different ways. Like I, I use this as a, I use the Korean example all the time. Most like the natural hair color for Koreans is black. The natural eye color for Koreans is dark brown. There are almost no exceptions to that. So so you look for different things like they look for other things and um and it's just it's very natural for koreans to tell each other apart obviously uh but there is a stereotype that um that you know the east asian stereotype that the hair color and the eye color must be the same therefore it must be difficult to tell them apart but you know for them on the other side westerners probably look or, or americans probably look uh, quite similar as well depending on facial structure or other genetic markers that they might be looking for and this is why diversity then, is good. Correct, Alfred. Absolutely. And then you get, uh, you have fa being face blind. Hi, mm. me. Or I'm face blind. <laughs> and I you just can't tell anyone like, apart. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And then I, uh, then you add in that like I am the I I grew up in like the Scandi, uh, well, mm. not Scandi, Nordic homogeny, and mm. uh, I I need spotters for movies. For oh, people wow. to tell me that like hey this is that character again <laughs> if when they like change clothes between scenes depending wow. on it. and That's like sometimes i watch k dramas with my friends and uh i am because yeah i am i am face blind and not used to yeah. asian yeah, yeah, yeah. faces so yeah. it's like extra bad <laughs> yeah no for sure <sighs> Damn, well, dudes. Speak, I think this counts as a community that. stun lock. I'm going to put down one for the counter. <laughs> it's just, just speaking, yes. just, <laughs> just speaking on that, uh, a way, like, say, Torians could, like, you know, differentiate each other literally could yeah. be their, the crests on their head. Like, yeah, markings, could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well. Yeah. Markings the, so, the markings are the most important part. Yeah. 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 So, and, I have... you know, scales. Yeah, yeah, that too. Some some details that we're not able see, to oh, see. Oh, scales yeah. are scales, you know. Yeah, but... exactly. I have found differences between some of the people that we've spoken to that are not humans, but by and large, the yes. most genetic diversity by far comes from humans, which is a nice full circle point to keep going. Any idea where I can? I'm find clicking Daniel? before anyone else can speak. No. Heard <laughs> the Vitarians trapped behind Borcha lines. Daniel went to help. Warned him not to go too dangerous. <clears throat> patients here need him. Stuck out anyway. Wanted to find him myself. Can't leave the clinic. Have to look after the patients. He sounds proud of his assistance, which he which he talked about earlier as well, um, because maybe he reminds him of him, someone who's a little more aggressively looking to help people. Have you had any trouble at the clinic? Nothing major. Blue sons came for humans, made threats, killed them before things escalated. <laughs> Nothing major. Cool. <laughs> no biggie. Exactly calm about taking out a group of mercs. Wasn't always a doctor. Some work the Solarian Special Tasks Group. Can handle myself. <laughs> Takes out gun. Forcha, all obvious threats. Never see me coming. Ah, oh, he's <laughs> such a badass, dude. I love him. Let's uh, head for the environmental plant. Yes, good. He's this. He's power. this tall, Release like pure. super we'll lanky, weedy Solarian, and then he pulls out a gun. And he's like, "Are you ready to meet God?" It's great. He's basically <laughs> just, yeah. He's basically he gave just you a like. Point 
he he's basically Alfred Pennyworth, but with like Bruce Wayne's intelligence. Yeah, yeah. I believe sure. I believe it's auto it, it is auto equipped, but we now have one of my favorite guns in this whole game. Oh, Carnifex. The Carnifex hand cannon. Uh, what about what about the Paladin? No, 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 no. One of one of. We can use this. <laughs> Ooh, medical capacity. Nice. The Carnifex yeah, is a desert ego. Yeah, pretty much. It's great. It's the it's the the three five seven magnum of the game. You ever I love morning. Uh, uh, yeah. Garrison wrecked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so where do we go? Do we? Why that door is locked? So how do we get out of here? Oh, we go through here. Okay. All right. So we're gonna do a nice save, and I think we'll finish this, and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll finish Omega, and then we'll end the stream. Depending on how long that takes. Oh, oh, I remember doing this. This was awful on higher difficulty. Garrus and Morden are my two absolute favorite characters. Yeah, yeah, they are very interesting. Are you trying to say Alfred isn't at least as intelligent as Bad Boy? No, I think it was just an expression. But yeah, Alfred, Alfred do be packing a good head on his shoulders. All right. Alfred so we got one, two, three, four. Five. Shoot him in the back. Five? Five Vorcha? Maybe six? Nah, there'll be more. I mean, the more will come, but... Don't yeah, you have it's... a radar by holding shift? Oh, we do, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, yeah, just five. Okay. Alright, I want you... Rips through shields. See, my... The, the synthetic stuff. Like, I have synthetic ar uh, ammo. Um... Oh, it does... So it actually does more... It says plus 20% of weapon damage on top of my already existing damage. So it doesn't actually, like, replace damage, question mark? I think like, it's just 20% more damage to shields. Yeah, yeah. So I might as well just always have it, I think. It doesn't... Think just... Yeah, it doesn't lower your damage against non-shields. Okay. Yeah, I'll just I'll just have it all the time. Let's, uh... Let's do that. Hello. Just want to equip all my ammo. No one else has any special ammo. Um, hold on. <clears throat> okay. And we'll go back to the sniping. Right. So I think, I definitely think the first one is going to be the, the flame trooper, but even if I, yeah, let's blow up the tank. All right. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Two, three, four, and five. Is there another one? There's more? Yeah, there's more. Six. Okay. Oh, here they come. Right, now we get to test my favorite pistol. Come here. Get to cover. <laughs> Cloak. They can't see me. And then die. <laughs> That's her. Okay, we're good. <laughs> and boom. Oh. oh god, it's good. I love this gun so much. Oh, that's a oh. That was an incredible flick. I'm quite proud of that. Oh, it just hits so hard. That sound as well. Ah, yeah, I remember fighting here. All right, switch weapons. <laughs> and one well-placed shot. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, one well-placed shot on who? It was, it was him. It was definitely a well-placed shot on him. <laughs> Are we good? Are we done? Uh, we have one more? Krogan I think one more. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, my God. No, it's down. That's all right. We're good. Goodbye. And one more. Hey. I rushed too far ahead because I wanted to show off the, the thing but, but I'm usually better at hanging back. Are we good? Get up. 
Get up. Um, Miranda, please. Uh, um, <laughs> Miranda. Excuse me? Oh, good job. Top That's, him uh... And now you're doing the same to him? Come on, man. No, I'm just, uh... Just Listen, he's, 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 a really, uh, he's a really, he's a really famous mercenary, right? I want to get me some. Hey guys, this is Miranda. She's one of the boys. <laughs> 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 uh, so that's the Carnifex. I love the Carnifex. It's my favorite. All, all I'm saying is, I'm just, I'm a little jealous. Okay, having Miranda and Shepard squatting over you while you're on the. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Zaid, get up, get up, get up. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's, uh, yeah, there's only one way to go, I think. And no bonuses here. Okay, we're good. Ah, there we go. Hey, ooh, is it time to play? Time to play, what is it, Quasar? I think Quasar, and I immediately think of, uh, of Helldivers now, so. Hey, Quasar? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Where's the box I need? There we go. I. Do. What? Do you just time them right, or did you create the whole thing where you compile them together? I timed them right. <laughs> so this is the new uh, Hell Divers loading screen for us. So. Okay. Imagine okay, I'll do, this. I'll do the music. Right? Are you ready? Are you ready? I'll do the music. Ba, 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 and then <laughs> you yeah. carry democracy's flag, Helldiver. <laughs> That's exactly how I've been timing it. So you got like the initial like launch, and then you hear the first scream, right? You know when like the camera's like panning, and like the the ships, the the pod dropping yeah, with the yeah, uh, yeah, Tie Fighter yeah, sound. Yeah. I just play the other sound. <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy that I'm such a stable part of your life. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking loading screen feels muted without the screen. That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm glad we did that whole thing as well. <laughs> okay, so... Oh! I'm telling you the truth. Oh, it's Daniel! I work for Morden at the clinic. I came here to help you. We know you're spreading the plague virus. We saw the vials in your bag. No. Those vials contain the cure. Please, you have to believe me. Maybe we should cut off your fingers. Oh, self. Not just checking. Look out. No. I still need soundboard stuff. One more step and you kill your friend. There we go. Signal henchman. <laughs> Signal henchman. <laughs> I know you're scared of the Vorcha, of the plague, but this man isn't to blame. If he was spreading the virus, why would he come into Vorcha territory? They're immune. She's right. Hey, dumbass. Doesn't make any sense. Hey, fear makes them. people do you know. crazy things. I have my word on it. Crazy. What crazy ones? Let him go. <laughs> crazy? How was crazy one? <laughs> you got what you wanted. Building a pod. A pod sent to hell. Go. We had a deal. Human nobility. I didn't know such a thing existed. Act number two. Towards Batarians. We're slowly deprogramming Thank you. Here. I thought Nash. they were gonna kill And them. ourselves. You know what happens in Mass Effect 3. <laughs> <laughs> or, or between. Professor could use your help right now. Power. He's got too many patients and not enough volunteers. Yeah, that's funny. Okay. I'll go right away. Thanks again. I owe you. Well, everything. Okay. <sighs> nice. Alright, well, that's, that's, that's one. Um, and then we gotta go and deal with the other one. Where's the other door? Where did that go? Oh, immediately. Goodbye. Goodbye. I, I have to say, as much as the headshots are very satisfying, oh, he's an angry one. As long as the head, as, as satisfying as the headshots are in this game, the fact that you can just take people's heads off in the second, in the third game, is incredibly satisfying with enough power. I think power. it's broken in MV3, but I think the patch fixes it. Oh, really? Okay. Something tied to the frame rate. Really? Yeah. Oh. Huh. Okay. Uh, don't worry, I'll send you a fuck ton of mods for MV3. Yeah, fix we're it. gonna do, we're gonna be doing lots of those. Hi! Oh, Jesus. Yeah, we're just gonna... <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna pretend that that didn't happen. Uh, okay. Any more? 
None down there. Yeah, we, we're gonna stay up top, brother. Much better. Much better lookout. Oh, ho, 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 ho. hi. Okay. There today. are teenagers today that have never lived in a ward without Star Citizen being in development. <laughs> Wait, is it out? No. Oh no! Oh oh oh! It's like there are, it's it's been it's been in development for so long. Yeah. Okay. Come on! <laughs> Go play Elite. Come on! Have a better time. He goes. I still have to play Elite Dangerous with like the stream deck equipped. Like and that shit would be as well. incredible. I have played this with this laptop before, but oh, yeah, you have just actually, a couple yeah. times. Oh. <laughs> Hello! Oh, I love seeing... I'm in my Rainbow Six Siege peaking era. God, I, see a, Six I see a single pixel of a head and I shoot. wonder how it's doing over there. Um, so far, still yeah. okay. They're adding a Method Chief to the game, I know that much. What? Yeah. Excuse me? Like, actual and Master another Chief? another female Spartan. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, it's like skin or something. <coughs> but oh, skin. Okay. That's hilarious. Okay, are we, are we good? Just they added uh, Uryu <clears throat> and Majima from Yakuza into Rainbow Six Siege as well. Oh, wow. Uryu, who never kills people, you know? Yeah, it... it <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't his... It, yeah, it, it is kind of... Um, it is a little interesting... I, th I think it shows the inevitability of games like the the, the realm of online competitive gaming uh, is is a bit of a I'm I'm gonna go a, a little bit deeper than maybe necessary and say I think it is a microcosm of um, of how we are expected to live uh, the the fine the infinite growth in a finite world people's interests in online multiplayer games only last so long. But unfortunately, because of the the economic model, you have to you have to continue the game. You have to keep bringing out new content all the time. The game can never die, and I think that's the real issue because everyone know everyone has this expectation that as soon as the game stops releasing new content, it will die. So you have to keep releasing new stuff always, 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 and you can never just stop and say this is the game, it's complete. Have fun until you lose, or until you lose fun and then move on to another game because. We can't do that anymore. You have to just keep playing something. And we're seeing that with mostly multiplayer online competitive ones. MJ just described live service games. I mean, yeah, but I think but I think live service games have, I think that is like, I, I don't think that they're inherently good things because they create this expectation in us with every game, which we've seen time and time again, that, uh, that games are expected to consistently bring out new stuff, whether or not they are live that was service. Was a lot games. of fucking blood. I yeah. Can, <laughs> speaking about live service games, I can recommend. Um, I don't remember his name. Ross, I, Ross, I think from Accursed Farms. Yeah. Guy behind Mind Behind Freeman. Ross. He, yeah. he yeah, he's he's a video where he really goes through the whole games as a service and how fraudulent it actually is. Oh as a yeah. Mm, yeah. I can recommend that one. It's just called Games as a Fraud by a Cursed. Games when you as said, a fraud? Um, when, when you said, speaking of live service games, I recommend, I expect you to, to go. Games. I recommend Destiny 2. I also thought you were going to talk about Destiny, yeah. <laughs> well, Hello, yeah, taters. the game that deleted old font and paid for it. Uh, oh, Dead, Cells, Dead Cells is experiencing this problem right now. The devs aren't going to update it anymore, and I'm fine with that. I wish that more games had that, but nowadays, games just can't come out and exist as they are anymore because of how much the live service model has taken over because of oh, how economically... Yeah, because of how economically rewarding it is. We were all so hyped, myself, myself included, for like a, a Baldur's Gate 3 DLC, and it was a little bit of a surprise when the devs came out and said... Uh, we're actually done. We we made a complete game and that's it. But I think that's I mean, brilliant. Before I, I that, respect they had that also so always said they they didn't. <clears throat> they weren't yeah. completely um, against the idea. So. I mean that's fair, but I I, re I respect the hell out of their decision to just let oh, this yeah. game sit as it is. I think yeah. I think it's really cool. It's very rare in the gaming industry because of how economically rewarding for shareholders 
the the live service gaming model is. Live service it all games started also because have... they made a funny curio joke. <laughs> <laughs> Live service games also have a bad habit of being filled with downright predatory monetization. Yes, yes, we see yep. that. I mean, the the play that is too. microtransactions. This Jesus is why Christ, Helldivers dude. Two is being so surprising to a lot of people. And even then, dude, Helldivers Two has a paid option. Like it has monetization in the game as well, which is not good. We shouldn't have that in a game you've already paid for. But even then, it's a. If you're gonna have it, it's probably the best version of that model, I guess. And yes, <laughs> let's let's keep shooting guns, I guess. <laughs> oh, we it's the Boom the Squad! Break fans! Everyone choke and die! Then collectors make us Oh, oh okay, so Morden was right. And this this gives us um this gives us a lot of evidence to trust Morden's judgment in the future. So when he says things we should probably listen. What do the collectors want? <sighs> Oh, Hello. Hello. I'll just say Team Wolves too. <laughs> yeah, sure. No. It is. <laughs> yeah, the, the unplayable game on any like matchmaking server. So they are working for the collectors. That's interesting. Alright, so, so so much for the blood pack leader. Uh, Jesus. Like on the note of like games just being fucked over by, you know, live service. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's why I meant not like you know whatever being fucked over. Oh like Team like <laughs> Team Fortress 2? Yeah. Central control system yeah. is in an L. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Man, that game has mm. fallen. You can inject the cure. Like to be fair, that game has still got a big population. It's just it's not been updated at all and it's like, you know, you, you, you can tell when it's just suffering for it. Also kinda like a 13, 14 year old game. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I think I think I think people need to accept when games die. When games die and move on. It's totally fine to just let a game exist as it is and then just move on to another game. You don't have to play a game for your whole life. I think it's to less, let stuff go. It's less like it's less that, right? It's just Valve being fucking silent assholes mm, okay. who never ever ever talk. They, the, they they talk about it recently. Oh really? Oh. Yeah. In the, I was more referring to the gaming industry at large, just not just like you know sequels and remakes, and it's it's the same with all media in general. All media, we were on this nostalgia wave of like wanting to bring back stuff that was guaranteed successful in the past, uh, in as opposed to making things new. So when new things come along, in fact, I think we are seeing a resurgence of like new content. But even then, Helldivers Two is Helldivers Two. It's a sequel. So even that is an example of something that was really good, but still a sequel to something. <clears throat> and um, and I do think it's okay to just let games, let franchises die, even if it is something that I absolutely love, like Star Wars. If, Except if Disney... when your game dies in a fucking cliffhanger, isn't it right, Half Life Two? <laughs> <laughs> if isn't games... that right, Half Life Alex? <laughs> if if Disney came along and said. Uh, uh, if Disney came along and said, this is it, there's no more Star Wars, I would be okay with that. Like, I, we can move on with something. If, um, and, and I love Star Wars. Like, it's part of who I am. Like, I've made it part of my freaking identity. But I'm okay if they, if they decide to shut it down because I know that it's not like, yeah, it, 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 things, things, nothing lasts forever, you know? I wish <clears throat> Konami had shot Silent Hill down. I always come back to the title of the Wanaha song, There is Never a Forever Thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anything you can buy in HD2 does not give you an advantage. No, no, yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you, but it's the idea of paying for a game and then still charging money on top of that for something inside. It doesn't matter what it's for, but the fact that it's there is, I think, something that shouldn't be there, just anywhere. Recent example, uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. Oh, yeah? They do, do they not see the horrible microtransactions again. They don't have any microtransactions? There's a lot of it. Oh, uh, okay. There's stuff that you don't need to buy. <clears throat> it's all in the fast game. Fast travel. And here's, and like, here's the thing. Not, it's not monetizing fast travel at all. Yeah, you can it's get any game. A singular, it's, a, it's a single marker you can place on the map somewhere that you can then teleport to with a resource you can only get in the game uh, and you get like six of them for free anyway that you can place around the map so okay okay yeah, so here's the point, like, right it's there, you can it's also only buy one of them 
Because <laughs> all the microtransactions in Dragon's Dogma 2 count as DLC, not actual, like, in-game store items. Mm, it's not Francine. the point. The point is that it's kind of, a, like, <clears throat> redundant. Yeah. Can I, can I inter... Yeah, Rain? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Rain. Thank you, I've been trying to, because I want to... Yeah. No, it's not you, it's everyone. I know I'm... I've been... But I, I literally um, not heard you until just then, though, so I'm sorry. Go on, Same. it's just... Discord. Yeah, it's... it's um, I was gonna say the concept with NJ, a, a really good analogy to it is to look in it as a garden. You buy the garden, it's, you know, pure grass all over. It works as a garden. But then imagine having to buy every flower, every tree on top of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, are you does are you in support of the model? Like, what what are you trying to say? No, no, I'm not in support. Oh, you're of the like model. like we shouldn't be able to buy. We shouldn't have to because no, I'm aren't saying. Gardens, or... Okay, was bad on it. Notice. <laughs> I'm not trying to. <laughs> What's your point? What's your point? <clears throat> My point is that buying on top of an already bought game is bad. That would yeah mean. yeah. No, I agree. I agree. And inherently, uh, and I liken like, it to a garden, you know, where you have to buy flowers on top of having bought the garden. Yes. Yeah. 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 No. Absolutely. I mean, if you've already bought a garden, then the garden should be there. Like you should just buy the stuff. I think. Um, yeah. I. I think. I'll, I'll it just does... shut up. No. <laughs> that's not what I was. That's not what I was getting at at all. It's okay. And I get your point, one hundred percent. The. Um, uh, I think. I. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter where the microtransaction is. It doesn't matter if it's harmless or if it's. It, the, it, it matters if it exists or not. That that's my opinion. If it exists, it's bad. It shouldn't. And that means I'm someone. I'm, I'm someone who's used microtransactions in a game before, but it. Um, uh, but but it doesn't matter. The fact that it exists is just inherently wrong to me. I don't think that it should exist. <clears throat> I put a uh, thing in no mic. Uh, which actually like continues nicely on the garden analogy and now goes to landlords mm. where uh -huh. uh, a person was getting kicked out of their home. The home had a beautiful mm. garden which the person had cultivated mm. and the landlord was like, mm, I could get renters in here to, uh, who would pay more for this. Yeah. I am going to kick you out. And the landlord had already shown the place and shown the beautiful garden and mm. the place had been bought. And then the person goes, okay and rips off all of the plants and flowers <laughs> they have placed there. Damn. So the new renters just get a empty dirt patch. That's wild. See, this is exactly why I brought up like both Helldivers and Dragon's Dogma, right? It's both games that have like micros for no particular reason, because then anything that you can get in these uh, micros, you can mm. just not pay for it. So it's kind of just there for the hell of it. Why is it there? Again, why like, it why then? Have that? Like, why have it then? To yeah. me, it's literally like, yeah, the the least they could do while also like while being forced to by like the shareholders, you know? Like, mm. Yeah, mm. like, like we want we want microtransactions. transactions. Okay, let's do it minimum effort. <laughs> that yeah. thing just makes the product look bad. Yeah. Again, again, even if they do nothing, and Zareth, like like Helldivers too, you have access to all content. That's great. But microtransactions will still get you there easily, like more easily, and and I think even that serves a purpose. It's not. It's not. It, and I, like a, regardless of whether it's like pay to win or not pay to win or anything, the fact that they're even there is bad. And um, um, is also the type in, of game. Uh, sorry, gone. No, no, Alf, Alfred in chat. I bought the garden. I should get what's growing in the garden as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's why it's a decent analogy for sure. Um, Basically fertilizer. No, you're right. Like it, it, uh, microtransactions, I understand them existing to like keep a game's life support going because mm. it costs a lot to run a game, especially a game that has, uses a service because you run it a service. Mm. But there are less scummy alternatives out there. No, no, no. That yeah, absolutely, for sure. There's. I don't think anyone will disagree with that. There are much worse models. But that's that doesn't mean that. I said less scummy, not worse. Oh, oh, less scummy. You mean like what do you wait, wait? What do you mean? Well, look at Tower Unite, for example. I'm gonna use that game as an example because yeah. it's a social game, and social game is usually the most predatory. Looking at you, VR chat, and your microtransactions <laughs> that you recently added. Right. Um. 
Tari Knight's a small dev team. Currently working on a lot of features. Um, emulation, VR, mm. uh, up to Unreal Engine 5, and you need to have an Unreal license if you have to publish a game on Unreal that's paid. And it's a very expensive license. Mm. Um, all the items that they keep adding to the game non-stop, the events, it's a lot of work for such a small team. Especially with all the game modes that the game has. Mm -hmm. And they said, we are running low on funds. Like, we need a uh, mm -hmm. new game. It's expensive, especially keeping it up. Yeah. What could, have, what could have they done? They could have just slapped microtransactions in there and called it a day. Right? Which, uh, nowadays, any other trip, any trip away game would have done. Like, look at Tekken. You saw yeah. the Tekken thing that happened recently, right? The Tekken thing? No, no, what happened in Tekken? Yeah, so Tekken 8, um, everyone played it, like, before release, they pre-order stuff, or the office, or whatever. Mm. The previews and everything, it was great. The game was fine, you could create characters and everything. No sign of any store product at all, like, mm. from the game. The game releases. Right after the releases, they make an announcement. We are announcing a Tekken shop! <laughs> like... <laughs> Keeping that nice. completely hidden from everyone. Mm. Yeah. But Tower Unite, they decided to release a supporter edition instead. It doesn't give you anything. You can just buy that if you want to support the developers. Nice. It's not a yeah. long going service like a microtransaction would, but it's an alternative. Yeah. This is what the, uh, the, uh, the Super Citizen Edition is in Helldivers, I believe. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it just gives you, like, a cosmetic or something. Um, yeah. Stratagem you know. Hero. <laughs> yeah. And Stratagem Hero as well. And Are you going to say anything? An, an SMG that's not as good as the one you get in the game. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Okay. Shall we end off stun lock number two? stun lock. Here we go. <laughs> it's it's, it's a good stun lock. Right? It's not like... No, 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 no I agree. Yeah. I agree. I am I laughing. I am amusedly laughing at it. This is a good, um, this is a good point as well. And, um, yeah, that, that SMG was kind of, was kind of doo-doo, yeah. <laughs> was it been, the, the guarding analogy was good. No one was laughing about it. It was pretty good. I think yeah, I understood dude. the end by bringing yeah. small as a pee. Don't worry about it. What, my, my questions and follow-up is, is literally just for clarification, that's all. So don't worry about it. All right, let's cure this thing. Excellent. The cure is in place. Oh. Now we need to reactivate oh, we probably have to shoot more Vorture on the way, don't we? I mean, we can talk about it. I just figured there was dialogue on the way, so we can talk about it more as we go. Ah! Uh, oh, really? Okay, one on either side of the room. Alright. Yeah, so... Are there... Um... What is happening? We're curing a plague! Okay, where are they? Yeah, we got no more. Okay. So we're going for one side of the room and then fighting our way to the other side. Okay. Uh, the We raise our fists and shake it at Bethesda for introducing horse armor. And <laughs> 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 Oh, that would be a suck that would be such a good collateral. Come here. Come here! Oh, oh my god! Oh. <laughs> Holy shit! Another uh, small it's... point that I wanted to bring um, is, to is uh, the if the game one. deserves or not microtransactions. I don't think any of them do particularly in terms of the durable model. But um, you release a game, there's more paid content within the game. I don't care if it's the expansion text are fine. I'll probably be fine with expansion text. Sure. And when you was to call that. Um. But, imagine I'm paying a lot of, like, micro money to, like, the game devs, right? But the game runs like ass, or it just doesn't work much. Sure. I think the focus needs to shift a little elsewhere. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Why would you release a game that barely works and expect for people to give you more money over it? Fallout 76. Fallout 76. Dragon's Dog must be super fun, even if they sell for free. Uh, fucking Elite Dangerous Odyssey on release. I'm not, I'm not gonna put Elite Dangerous Odyssey. I should release like ass Odyssey. 
mean, the launch, the launch of Odyssey was pretty bad. Yeah, this is something a lot of people need to understand. You can like some and still uh, see flaws. Oh, yeah. No, you of course. Still, some people think that saying bad about a product that they like just means that you don't like it. No, oh, oh, it, that... it just means that you like it. Yeah, I, I have a take about that as well. I think th this idea that... Oh, shit, I'm gonna die. This, um... Oh, God, that was a really good sound. Uh, Same if you're gonna move up, maybe you should switch to your pistol. Just, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but it's Instead still killing them. to use, like, a 200-meter scope from, like, it, five meters away. It's still killing them in one hit. You know what? We're gonna use one ammo of the black hole gun. Here we go. Ready? Oh, God. Oh, God. Never like mind. Never mind. Oh, oh, uh, Zero oh, deaths. You're talking about Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Every time I say Odyssey, people like to say Assassin's Creed. But every time I say Odyssey, I'm talking about Elite Dangerous. <laughs> oh, no, we have to do this again? Uh, this is, like, great. Oh, yeah. When you die here, it's kind of a thing. All right, let's try it again, then. No, so... I'm not talking about Assassin's Creed. I'm talking about Elite Dangerous. I... I... The... The real, uh, the real reason for this, the, the thing that you mentioned, uh, that that for some reason, if you say anything bad about something, uh, then you don't like it, is that, is that people unfortunately have been taught to see things very divisively, uh, and there are a lot of there are a lot of reasons for this. It's not um, it's not like one thing alone, but uh, the point is that. You, you're not really expected if you are expected to like something then many people expect you to like every aspect about it and defend it like it's your favorite sports team or something and anything that happens nothing that happens in it can be bad um, and and wanting a thing that you like to be better uh, in some way is seen as not liking the thing which is just yeah it, it's very it's very weird so yeah I love Mass Effect. I think Mass Effect 2 has one of the worst combats in the series. It's, it's Bruh, fucking I, horrible. I think it's one of the... I love the combat in Mass Effect. When you compare it to 3, though. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think 3 is a little so bit more... Mass Effect 2 is a lot more when you compare it to 3. Yeah, it is Mass Effect 2, I think it's a bit too... Uh, no shield. It's still a very heavy tank on those. You know what I mean? What, uh, what yeah, the biggest yeah, shame yeah, yeah. is that... Uh, I, th I think Andromeda has the best combat in, like... It does. <laughs> uh, yeah, very well, good combat. <laughs> with the store. With the, with the flaw IMO being the that one. you have every class unlocked. The flaw being the rest of the game. The flaw being the rest of the game. Sorry, my face is tired. No. <laughs> also, it's like. Usually I shit on Andromeda a lot. Like it's horrible, it's terrible. Yeah. I have my problems in Andromeda. I don't like its Marvel quickly like, for example. That's one of the reasons why I don't like it. Because Mass Effect 1 to 3 are very mature, but they have their moments of light hardness, especially this the DLC. Yeah. Um But Andromeda looked at the Citadel DLC and was like, oh let's do that for the entire game with characters that no one else. And uh, I just don't think the humor, like the Marvel humor, from Andromeda, fit for me. Especially the open world part again. I don't, think, I don't like open world games in general. But if I'm gonna say positives about Andromeda, the combat's really fucking good. <laughs> yeah, I mean I've, I've heard great things about it. The combat is extremely satisfying in the game. There's a lot of fluidity. You can play as a cover shooter if you want, or you can just go out there shooting like mad. Oh, there they are. Okay. Oh, wow. Where the where the combat falls apart for me is a multiplayer. Because uh, Mass Effect for multiplayer, you can hold your ground, you can strategize, and just go for actual health trying to play safe. <laughs> um, <laughs> Andromeda has the tendency of having enemies spawn behind you and above you. <laughs> that didn't that kill him. Cool. <laughs> I, lo I love, I love that weapon. Jesus. All right, we're out of ammo for sniper. Down. Time for hand cannon. Hello. Now, if I'm gonna go back to normal and meme instead of being serious, 
They never gave me my bed for sex scene. The game is bad. Like sex scene, like you know. They tease the romance with drag, and he turns you down. Oh, oh here we go. Airborne viral levels dropping, patients improving, Vorcha retreating. Well done, Shepard. Thank you. And thank you for me as well. Those Batarians would have killed me. For a second there, I thought you were going to shoot them even after they let me go. I made a promise to spare them if they let you go. I honor my promises. Merciful of you. Risky. Would have killed them myself. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, how can you say that? You're a doctor. You believe in helping people. Lots of ways to help people. Sometimes heal patients, sometimes execute dangerous people. Either way helps. Go check on the patients. Lots of work to do. Think about what I said. He, he very clearly has a, a... Good kid, bit naive. He'll learn. Letting him take <laughs> over the clinic. Should be able to handle it now that Vorja are gone. It's very interesting that the people who... The people who are willing to take lives... Anyone who... It's... Uh, sorry, let me try it again. From the perspective of the people who are willing to take lives as... I don't want to say casually, but as readily as Morden is. Everyone who's not willing to take lives and is and is not okay with that is seen as naive. Uh, it's very it's very clear that he believes that he's in the right here, when there was nothing to be gained from us from us killing these Batarians, um, based on the possibility that they might do something dangerous in the future. What makes them dangerous? What can we do to prevent that? How can we uh, how can we help them not be? There, there are so many more possibilities. And Morden stops all potential at the point of killing. I think uh, it's not just him. It's, it's other people as well. But the, the taking away of life is a decision that you make that immediately communicates to that person, I don't care about the potential you have as a human being. That's, that's the decision you make when you, when you decide to take a life. So uh, it's not something that I'll ever be comfortable with, ever. I mean, video games are different, right? Obviously, but yeah. We've cured the plague. Are you ready to help stop the collectors? Yes. Unexpected to be working with Cerberus. Many surprises. Just need to finish up here at the clinic. Won't take long. Meet you at your ship. Looking forward to it. Hell yeah. Uh, Those I think. are so great. Yeah, they really are. I think we're done, right? Are we good? Yeah. I don't think we have anything else to do. We're done. Yeah. Here we go. We're heading out. See you in the Normandy. Wait, shit, fuck! No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Wait, you just missed his sex scene. No! Blow <laughs> uh, game. Nice. Recruited Dr. Morton <laughs> Solis for the team. Examination of Omega Plague Cure confirms Dr. Solis' expertise. Can also use work on Omega as leverage against Aria if necessary. Interesting. Jesus okay, the Christ. Carnifex uh, hand cannon. Effective against armor, weak against shields and biotic barriers, upgrades the Predator Heavy Pistol. The Carnifex is a favored sidearm of mercenary leaders and equip Eclipse mercenary tech specialist, an expensive but powerful weapon. Its marketing materials feature a charging Krogan with the slogan, Don't you wish Carnifex was at your side? <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay. Oh, damn, we got a lot of credits there. Nice. Fish, fish, fish! Thank you. Very good. It We're gonna go grab me. Fish. Element zero like that. Are you into radioactive by now? <laughs> yes. Very exciting. Cerberus working with aliens. Unexpected. Elusive man branching out, maybe. Not so human centric. <laughs> You're very well informed. Somebody <laughs> in government, well connected. Espionage experts had top level clearance once. Retired now. Still. Hear things. Top level Informed clearance. Of only, no knowledge of man behind it. That's huge. Anti-alien reputation listed as problematic. Uh, correct. <laughs> Don't kid yourself, Professor. Humans still come first in the elusive man's eyes, but this mission is too big for them to handle alone. The collectors are abducting human colonists out on the fringes of terminus space. Mm, not simple abductions. Wouldn't need me for simple. Very wide Entire stance. colonies disappear yeah. <laughs> without a trace. No distress. He's just looks maxing. Out. There are no signs of any kind of attack. There's virtually no evidence that anything unusual happened at all. <laughs> except that every man, woman, and child is gone. Gas, maybe? No. Spreads too slow. Airborne virus? No. You don't slow have it. to sit there and guess. Yeah. We collected We're gonna samples tell from one of the colonies. I'd like you to analyze them and figure out how the collectors did this. Yes, of course. Analyze the samples. We're going to need a lab. 
There is a fully equipped lab on the combat deck, Professor Solus. <laughs> if you find anything lacking, please place a requisition. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Pilot Who's no talking? Voice. Simulated emotional inflections. Could it be? No. Maybe. Have to ask. Is that an AI? <laughs> <laughs> I love the way he does that. <laughs> so, Morden. AI. Morden communicates his internal thoughts externally. And all we are doing here with the Paragon interruption is, again, it's. We, we so can. We spiraling. We can, yeah. When, when we feel like it, it's unnecessary for him to think about it. So, we're just like, don't. Don't, like, you know, um. Don't sort of strain your brain trying to think of options. We have the answers already. It's okay. You don't have to. But I suppose there's merit. Energy on this thing. There's merit in letting him continue, uh, just kind of working it out for himself instead of leading him. Instead of just giving him the answer, we could lead him to it. But I think we're on a we're on a time crunch. So you know, yeah. This ship is equipped with an artificial intelligence. An AI on board. Non-human crew members. Cerberus more desperate than I thought. <laughs> the Collectors have taken tens of thousands of colonists. We'll do whatever we have to do to find and stop them. Yes, of course. Can't risk being captured like colonists need to identify neutralized technology. Need samples. Which way to the lab? Follow me, Professor. I love him. <laughs> He's so cool. Uh, and now we have... Singing. We have the science team! Yay! Okay, so we have... Metagel. We got Inferno armor. Interesting. Tech damage. The whole Raz, amazing. The whole world is Mording's coding duck. What is a coding yes. duck? Uh, a coding duck mm. is uh, when you're when you're writing code uh, and you find a uh, something bugs in the code, something doesn't work. You find uh, a rubber ducky and you explain your code to the ducky, and then usually when you're explaining it out loud, you find where the mistake uh, is. Ah, okay, like a drawing. Well, a drawing board basically, where you like a wall to bounce ideas off of. Okay, okay. Yeah. I get it. That's cool. <laughs> I like that. All right, let's immediately talk to Morden. Here we go. Hi. Actually, wait, before we do, we have some research. So we can actually research new upgrades to dramatically improve the power of your squad mates, squad members, weapons, and ship. Very cool. Discover research projects by acquiring new upgrades. For example, if you find an assault rifle upgrade, put your scientists can study it, and they may discover a research project to further improve assault rifles. When you post a research project, you must pay the specified number of rare resources. You then gain the upgrade described in the research project, and the upgrade moves to the upgrade section of the research journal. Now, the only reason, the only way we can get these upgrades is by mining planets, which I'm not going to do more than once per planet. So we're absolutely using that mod that we did. Uh, yeah, we need iridium. Look at that. So research done. Look at that. Probing Uranus. Seriously, Probing Uranus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, yay! Okay, now we, we don't have any of this left. Uh, we have enough stuff for it, but we haven't we haven't found the upgrades yet. We have found this though. So we can do that. Oh, emergency shielding. <clears throat> Unity restores squad member shields to full strength. That's nice. Cool. Tech damage, good. Ah, this is the Ezo stuff, okay. What does a trauma module do? Unity heals your squad to full health. Oh my god, we've got huge buffs here now. Okay. Oh, some prototypes. Okay, here we go. First. Ooh, oh, the cryo, nice, very the cool. The avalanche. All right, the avalanche. <laughs> <laughs> Cryo round technology is used to modify standard weapon slugs. A cooling laser collapses the ammunition into Bose Einstein condensate. Ooh. A mass of supercooled subatomic particles capable of snap freezing impacted objects. Normandy scientists have found a way to apply this technology on a large scale. By generating a mass effect containment bubble, this proof of concept large weapon technology is effective against armor shields and biotic barriers. It is nicknamed the Cryo Blaster. Very cool. All right. Missile launchers. We know what a missile launcher is. Um, oh. Each projectile features a friend or foe recognition system, ensuring it will find a hostile target, though not necessarily the one in the crosshairs. <laughs> oh, wait, you know it, it curves. Oh, uh, missile launcher 77, missile launcher. Oh, ML 77 missile launcher, yes, correct. <laughs> okay, let's do more. Uh, the eviscerator shotgun, fun. Human civilian design has a unique ammunition generator. 
Where most modern firearms shave off chips or pellets from an ammunition block, the M22 shaves off serrated metal wedges <laughs> designed to fly aerodynamically. This dramatically improves its armor piercing capability. Yes, and its pain production, I'm sure. And its tight grouping helps wounded ballistics at longer ranges than standard shotguns. This design also violates several intergalactic weapons treaties. Yes! <laughs> so the M22 is not distributed to militaries, except this one! <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you're not, you're not, a, you're not a military. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Hey, look, it's Iron Man. Hell yeah. Built specifically for service field operators, the Inferno armor is a VI dedicated to recognizing signs of stress and medical trauma. This application helps assess soldiers, but can be useful in any high-risk situations. The Inferno's microframe computer also manages biotic amp and omni-tool power. Microservice helps the wearer's movements to counteract the armor's weight. So, negotiation bonus? What's that? Like Paragon Renegade stuff? Yeah. Oh, wow. I That's think, really interesting. Well, I think it is. That's so cool. I like that. <laughs> okay, heavy weapon ammo capacity. Good. I think we might have another one. Nope. Oh, we can get the avalanche now. Yay. Oh, 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 it's the cane. It's the cane. It's the C41N. <laughs> The effectiveness and efficiency of Mass Effect based weapon technology has rendered large scale deployment of highly explosive weaponry all but obsolete in infantry weapons. Normandy scientists have prototyped a modified version of traditional high explosive rounds that is applied to a 25 gram slug. When accelerated to 5 kilometers per second, the round Excuse is me. devastating. Though a technically oh, inaccurate God. label, this prototype weapon is nicknamed the Nuke Launcher, and its high explosive matrix generates an archetypical mushroom cloud on impact. Holy shit. <laughs> Five kilometers per second. Oh, it's just it's just that war is... crime guns, Raz. That's all it is. That's insane. How fast is like the average like how fast is a bullet? The average round? Hang on. So five kilometers per second is five thousand meters per second, right? Um average bullet speed. Like three kilometers per oh. hour. Three thousand kilometers per hour. So this is oh my God. five kilometers per second. So this is hello. Hang on. Convert bomb kph to kps. So five. What was it? Three thousand kilometers per hour. Yeah. <laughs> Three thousand kilometers per hour isn't even one kilometer per second because you have to divide by <laughs> 3,600. It's and this thing is five. Feet for a bullet is two thousand seven hundred feet per second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one is five kilograms per kilometers per second. Five kilometers per second is eighteen thousand kilometers per hour. That's what the fuck. That's the speed that space rockets get to. Like they to to enter to enter orbit. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> Hard work. Jesus. Isn't like the yeah. cane's projectile really slow moving? Yes. That's funny as hell. <laughs> yeah. I, don't I got know. it here in Gary's oh, mod right now. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Alright, we're doing the avalanche. When something is going so fast, it looks like it's going slow. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, we can wear collector armor. <laughs> here you go, Dedos. Cerberus adapted this yep. suit for you out of salvaged collector technology. The collector's chitinous armor is flexible and even tougher than ballistic fibers. Its organic construction allows it to be self-healing, and the muscle-like tissue that assists movement ensures it is comfortable to wear despite its weight. I mean, we'll get it, but we probably won't wear it. Just because it's nice <laughs> to have everything. Ah, uh, yes. Five kilometers an hour a second. <laughs> oh, jeez. The speed! The collector's main weapon used the same principles as a human assault rifle, but its organic components clearly set it apart. Its power source seems to be an internal organ with biotic capacitance. Its ammunition resembles pellets of metallic enamel that strip shields off enemies with deadly efficiency. Jesus, so this stuff is so wild. It's a living organism that has biotic powers which shoot its teeth at people. Yeah. 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 Delicious. So this is like, where's the, yeah, let me see the Cerberus assault armor. Designed for shock troops who are expected to turn the tide to battle against creatures or forces that would decimate normal soldiers, the troops demanded three things to design. Shields and armor thick enough to last against a superior foe, and a rechargeable fact pack to extend a heavy weapon power cell. The only drawback of the armor is its weight, which the troops carry as a point of pride. <clears throat> oh, my real voice slipped out for a second. They have a saying, out of shape going in, in shape coming out. Oh, damn. Mm. Oh, 
Okay, we have a bunch of upgrades. Yay. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> You're excused. All right, let's wait for the let's wait for the upgrades to go away, and then we will uh, we'll talk to Morden. Uh, I um. Uh, I ended the discussion about microtransactions fairly prematurely, I feel. There is more we could talk about it. However, it was getting late, and I did want to finish the mission, so I hope that everyone is okay with that. <clears throat> you can you can plop it over to learning to talk. That is something we could talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's let's talk about microtransactions in games. Someone can add that as a new topic if you want to, because I'll probably forget. Okay. Oh no, they've attacked Malevolent Creek again. Again? What? Yeah. Yeah. Open fools, guys. Wait, no, no, oh, no, no, I thought you meant again as in, like, after today's attack, because it's already been attacked. <clears throat> it's only 94% liberated. Yes, oh, I'm what? feeding the fish. If you're going to use my real name, I'm going to use yours. <laughs> what, 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 what did you, what, what, how much liberated is my level on? 94%. Oh, nice. Oh, Jesus okay. Christ, okay. Yeah, it's a defense campaign. Uh, it was like 50, just a bit ago. Taylor's how are you feeling like today? 32. Okay. All right, here we go. Morden. Shepard, how can I help? Hello. Uh, upgrades. <laughs> she just sits there and goes, upgrades. Any ideas on other ways to prepare for the collectors? Ideas, yes. Expensive, but possibly valuable. Can show you. Oh. <laughs> You, you have a terminal for this, Morden. It's okay. I've already bought it. Ooh, a Morden no, Omni see, tool. He, yeah. Morden gets 20% tech power damage. Morden built his own Omni tool and can make significant upgrades given the proper materials. We have that. It's fine. You can have that. Hell yeah. Hey. How can I help? Any ideas on other ways to prepare for the collectors? Sorry. I've done what I can. Focusing yeah. on studying collector tech now. Very cool. Is the lab working well for you? Quite satisfactory. Found a few surveillance bugs. Destroyed most of them. Returned the expensive track to Miranda. Nothing unexpected. Just need more samples. More collector data, tissue samples, anything you can get, I can use. Find new tech. Can you imagine Miranda's face when he plopped a bug on her desk and said, Last one. Found several others. Please do not spy on me. <laughs> and then just walks out. Incredible. <laughs> so cool. Tater still has a migraine. Can see out both eyes again, thankfully. Uh I'm so sorry. Are there any medical concerns I should be aware of on the team? Cerberus personnel in excellent condition. No squad concerns to report. Always some matters, but nothing affecting immediate mission. Okay. You just wait until Scale Lich gets aboard. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a minute to talk? Of course. Plague on Omega dealt with. Plenty of time to analyze collector intelligence. Impressive laboratory setup. Missed working for operations with a budget. AI in particular, very helpful. Best setup I've seen <laughs> since work with Special Tasks Group. Oh, uh, oh, okay. So Morden's, yeah, Morden's thing is going to be Special Tasks. This is how we. This is what we talk about. His time in Special Tasks. It must have been frustrating working on Omega with such a limited facility. No, loved it. Limited facility presents challenge. Save greatest number of people using limited resources. Security threats, gangs, mercenary groups add additional difficulty. Quite enjoyable. The plague stretched abilities to limit. Couldn't have asked for more. Also, enjoy saving people, of course. Helping the helpless, greater good, all that too. Nice retirement after SDG work complete. I'm going to critique Shepard for a second here. I don't... I think the way that she talks to Morden uh, so far is a little bit leading. Uh, the, the questions that she asks are a little bit leading. And she doesn't really do that with it. I, I don't really... I haven't noted a time where she does it with other people. I think she's trying to keep him on track. Yeah, maybe. I would say it's not a criticism. It's more of a... When you're talking to someone, uh, questions are much better received by people when you ask them how they feel about something rather than assuming how they feel off the get-go. Uh, when she says it must have been frustrating, that is that is an assumption, even if it's a softly worded one. Uh, and she's trying to show empathy for sure, but it would be much more. I think it would be much more productive to to ask 
someone, how did you feel about working on Omega compared to all of the stuff you had when you were working with STG? And it, we would have got the same answer, but he would have thought somewhere in the other person's brain, they think, ah, oh, this person cares genuinely about my original feeling rather than leading me to something. Uh, there is a reason that leading questions or are not allowed in uh, courts of law in most countries, except for cross-examination, then they're allowed. Or, yeah. uh, Shepard is trying to convey a uh, understanding that, hey, I recognize how I thought you were feeling, so I am using these words that you probably were thinking of already, and conveying that, hey, I recognize this feeling, but she thought completely wrong. Correct. Which is why it's better to ask open-ended questions. Because yes. she was wrong. I think the... Yes. The, um, like, like she, she is, she is doing her best to be like, I'm assuming, but, or, or rather, like, I'm trying to connect with you, but that's based on her own assumption. We don't know Morden yeah. at all. We've only had like two conversations with him, so it would be much better to ask open-ended questions. <clears throat> um, I rolled away from my humidifier in my sleep and woke up coughing uncontrollably. Not good for migraine. Oi, dude. Damn. Is that a fan or a hamster ball in the background? That is... <laughs> That's... Wow, I never noticed that. I, I I thought it was a fan, but but nice. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> it's so you can, like, stick your hands in yeah, and stuff it's without a little, opening the entire thing. It's, yeah. it's a little thing, yeah. Migraine's so bad, the pain worked me back up at 4 a.m. when my meds wore off. Oh. Ugh. Please, can we, can we, you know, Shepard here got some pretty good cybernetic upgrades. I don't think she gets sick like or migraines or anything so do you want to like work for Cerberus they, they've got good cybernetic programs if you need a uh, if you need some upgrades okay what upgrades, about special people. tasks group uh, upgrades tell me more about the Solarian special tasks group respected organization clandestine handles difficult assignments with limited oversight recon analysis occasional wet work identify problems have neutralization options occasional wet work arise. model for council specters based on special tasks group very similar. <laughs> wow, isn't that isn't that interesting? <clears throat> I also I love it how he is constantly mobile and mm. doing something. Yeah, he's always while distracting you're himself. To him. yeah. mm. Taters, wet work is assassination, not what you think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wet work is just what? killing people. All right, he was an assassin. <laughs> So it would time. also be prostitution. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't know that. No, yeah. we do. That's what the term means. It's def <laughs> it has a definition. <laughs> yeah, but when you, you can, don't can know, can we redefine it? <laughs> it might also mean that in Solarian culture, you don't know. Jesus. <laughs> Similar in what way? All right, I want to Solarians see this lack numbers, brute strength, military prowess. Have to rely upon stealth. Jesus, it's raining hard. Agents trusted, given Holy wide shit. operative freedom. Spectre similar. Given goal, told to accomplish. Better funded, of course. <laughs> the Didn't STG have to buy are our just own the galaxy's deadliest sex workers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, cool. Is your assistant Daniel settling in all right? Quite well. Safe and secure. Neighborhood mostly quiet with plague gone. Left him the security mechs just in case. Can't be too careful. Also tired of mechs. Noisy. Never used them in STG. Hmm. Yeah, let's talk about special tasks then. You said you were in the special tasks group. What kind of research were you doing? Not simply research. Several recon missions. Covert, high risk, served under a young captain named Kiri. <gasps> hey! Yeah. He took water, yeah. tissue samples from Krogan colonies. <gasps> he studied, he studied the genophage. Yo! Oh, you can say you met Kiri. Yeah, we'll say it afterwards because I think... You're all ethical and... What's what, what's that? I said it or all these studies were ethical and not. Yeah. <clears throat> um the uh the, the, the dial the way the dialogue functions is usually uh if you use one of those then sometimes the these ones go away, so I'll do these first. Why would STG study the genophage? Krogan rebellion's bloody, dangerous, nearly as bad as Rachni attacks. Mm. All species evolve, adapt, mutate. If genophage weakens, need to be prepared. 
Okay, now we get into the ethical dilemmas here. So we've already understood the genophage is something horrific. Something incredibly wrong. It was the way to curb Krogan's after the Salarian's mistake in the first place. And now we're going to figure out... We're going we're gonna to learn more from someone who was on the inside and was was working intimately with the Krogan genophage. What was the um, preparing to do? Oh, sorry. Hang on. Military schematics. Sorry, if all you call population growth. Hang on, hang on, Dialogue, dialogue. Genophage reduced Krogan numbers. Species aggression unchecked. Population explosion would be disastrous. STG helped check Krogan rebellions. Needed to be ready to do the same. Simple recon. Nothing to worry about. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, continue. Why are you called Eminem, apparently? Um, I'm gonna... Oh, hi, Zarif. the post and no mic. Hi, MJ. Why are you... Oh, you're... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're Eminem, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's learn about the genophage from someone very qualified to talk about it. What can you tell me about the genophage? Bioweapon designed by Salarian science team. Deployed by Turians against Krogans to end Krogan rebellions more than a thousand years ago. Affects every cell of Krogan body. Commonly and incorrectly considered a sterility plague. Actually adjusts viable fertility rates to compensate for high Krogan birth rate. Stabilizes to pre-industrial population growth levels. <sighs> okay. I'm not going to I'm not going to pretend that I'm that I also study the genophage, so sure. And I think for the benefit of medical accuracy, okay, not a sterility plague, but the effect is similar as if it was one. Now Krogans were used to something, were used to an accelerated birth rate, and then you and then you just crushed them. And and that is that is worth considering as well. But for now, just an open kind of an open discussion about it, and uh, we'll get into how he feels about it later on as we go. I worked with an STG captain named Kirahi. His team helped me destroy Saren's cloning facility on Burmire. Smiles. Her, he was part of that. Jury rigged explosive. <laughs> Always got job done with limited resources. Good captain. Bit of a cloaca, though. Loved his speeches. <laughs> Hold the line. Personally, <laughs> preferred to get job done and go home. Probably military bravado. Jargon. Chest pounding. Uh, no offense. <laughs> He's so precious! Uh. Also, you'll note that he doesn't really use um, he doesn't use any art he doesn't use any pronouns or articles like um, because he because his mouth moves too fast he just needs to get the more the more important words out. Also, and I appreciate him calling Kirihi a cloaca instead of an ass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Nice talking with you, Morden. I should get back to work. Need to study. So much data here if you need me. Yay! Okay. Cool. And I think, uh, I think that's where we'll end things. Oh, let's talk to Kelly about it. And then we'll, we'll do one more round of the Normandy next stream. And then we'll, we'll thingy. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Kelly. Morden's psych profile warned of hyper behavior, but he is like <laughs> a hamster on coffee. He's going to be a very productive member of the team. Anyway, what's up? I love her. Is there anything I should know? You have unread messages at your private terminal. Thank you. Anything else, Commander? Is there anything I should know? You have unread messages at your private terminal. Thank you, Kelly. Anything else, Commander? Is there anything I should know? You have unread messages oh, really? at your private oh, terminal. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Anything Thank else, you so Commander? much. Is there anything else, Commander? Should speak to You have unread messages at your private Shit, terminal. I should, I should really else, get to Feed the fucking <laughs> fish, MJ! <laughs> oh, yeah! I actually forgot to feed the fish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you received a message at your private terminal. Okay, we're going to read messages and then feed the fish. <laughs> All right, uh, unread messages. You're not dead from Emily Wong. Hey, okay, you're alive. How come you broke whatever cover you've been under for two years, but didn't offer an exclusive interview to your favorite reporter? Whenever you come up for air and are ready to talk, let me know by Emily Wong. Very cool. We love her. From Nala Butler, take care of Garrus. Commander Shepard, my husband was one of the men serving on Garrus's team. Ooh. I don't know how much Garrus talked to you about what happened. I don't know the specifics myself, only that my husband died in a trap, set by those bastard gangs. I know Garrus blames himself. He took every shot fired at his squad as a failure on his part, and it was clear when he sent me the message about my husband that he thinks it was his fault. My husband would never have wanted that. He was proud of the work he did on Garrus's squad. He was taking back Omega from the gangs. He died fighting with honor. I miss him. God, I'd give anything to get him back. But what happened there wasn't Garrus's fault. You're his commander mm. now. Please, 
If you can, help him stop blaming himself. And please don't tell him that I sent you this. Thank you. From Nala Butler. Another, another issue that we have with blaming yourself is that not only does it put an unnecessary expectation on you, and it takes accountability away from the bad guys, but it also denies the other people that you might consider people you care about <clears throat> of agency as people. The moment that Garrus says, all of this is my fault, it's all my responsibility, I should have never done this, none of this is on you, then he has implied, he has implied that, that he is in full control over his teammates and that they do not make any choices of their own accord. And that is a lack of respect towards his teammates. He may think that he respects them, but the effect that that has on them is taking away their agency and their ability to make choices. And that is another maybe lesser known consequence of blaming yourself for things. <clears throat> it puts unnecessary accountability on you. It takes away accountability on for the person who actually made the choice. And it takes away agency of people who made choices to be next to you when mistakes happen. And it denies them their independence. And as a result, their personhood. So yeah, very uh, very touching letter. And uh, yeah, we're going to respect her wishes. And we're, we were going to do that anyway. So... But this is good. This is good confirmation that we're on the right uh, that we're on the right track. I'm ignoring your comment. No, no, I'm not. Oh, you were talking about wet work. No, 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 no. I'm I'm moving on from that. <laughs> <laughs> if you get wet when you're killing people, that's your business. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, All right, healing of your facial. What's that? Just depends how close you're standing, how wet you get. Yeah, that that's fair. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is a fun one. I've done further investigation regarding your facial scarring, and the old adage of mind over matter holds true. Negative attitudes and aggressive acts, renegade, create adverse reactions with your cybernetic implants, while peaceful thoughts and compassionate actions, paragon, promote healing. If you maintain a positive outlook, I believe your facial scarring will heal on its own. Otherwise, there is surgical equipment we could use to insulate your cybernetic implants and accelerate your healing regardless of your mental outlook. I've updated plans for the new medical equipment to your research terminal in the tech lab. Sincerely, Chalk West. A very, very cool way uh, to represent how renegade you've gone, uh, based on how your scars have not refu have refused to heal, and yet giving you an option to make them heal anyway if you don't like them, which I think is great. This is the first ship enhancement, I think. Yeah, the medbay upgrade. Using this unit will immediately and completely heal your scars. Further scarring will not occur regardless of the actions you take. I don't think we need it necessarily. We'll we'll get it later, maybe. Uh, but yeah. Okay, and that is that. You should upgrade fish. feeding the fish. Oh, oh sure. Fish. I should fish. upgrade feeding my fish. Fish. Feed the fish. The fish. Feed the oh, chat. Uh, there we go. Thank you for that. The I forgot fish again. Of chocolate. I do. I, I do I just. Um, I do just forget things, like, I forget things all the time, so thanks for reminding me. Uh, it's not really a good thing to be forgetful as a, as a game master in a tabletop game, but, you know, what have you. I, I, I tell good stories otherwise. <laughs> I forget things all the time as a game master. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, the fish off I'm edge, just yay. a game master. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh my god, that is shiny as hell. Whoa. Look at that. Cerberus Assault Armor. Collector Chitin Armor. Oh, you can tell that it's modeled after the Recon Hood. <laughs> oh, wow. That's creepy. Damn. And then the Inferno Armor. Ooh, that looks really cool, actually. Okay. And we've got a visor. Do we have any more, like, any more stuff? No, we don't. We do have a new chest plate, though. Yay! Nipples! Okay, these ones uh, increase power damage by 3%, and this is shield delay, so this is absolutely what we're going to do next. Uh, I'm I'm delaying the end of the stream. I should just equip these now, uh, and then... Uh, no. No, that's fine. We'll change, we'll change the color later. It's all good. I just wanted the... I just wanted the eight You fed the fish? Yes, I fed the fish. Okay.
<sighs> and we're gonna end here. Yay. I need to check on my house downstairs to make sure that a leak has not sprung because it is raining like absolute crazy outside. Like I can okay. feel it literally pelting down. It's gonna be so nice going to sleep like this. Oh. My my one regret of not living in this area like I used to uh, is that you can hear the rain so clearly here. It's just like it pelts down. The roof is like corrugated iron, so it's like it's so nice. You can also hear the birds in the morning. They like scuffle around. Okay. Um, fish. <laughs> All right. Well, it's um it's it's nice to have so many people to remind me to feed fish, and. Uh, yeah, we had we had a total of probably more, but two that I that I took took note of. Two stun locks this stream. Very good. Better than the four last stream, most of which we need to get the counter. The first one I have a counter on my stream deck. Uh the first one is um uh the second one was about microtransactions in gaming. But what was the first stun lock? Oh, that was Morden and Culture. It was it was Culture in the Mass Effect universe. Okay, cool, yes. cool. Like genetic diversity. Okay, so we had yes. two two stun locks. So far, we're okay. It was it was better than it could have been. And uh, yeah, thank you, thank you all for joining me in this journey. It's been so nice. I really love Yay. getting this deep on discussions with everyone, regardless of what we're doing. Uh, it really feels like uh, we're we're connecting, and I like that. Agree. So thank you for that. Uh, thanks for spending time with me. Everyone in chat, thanks for being there as well. If uh, if you uh, had me on in the background or if you were working while that was going on, it's it's just nice to spend time with you either way. And to my friends in Discord, thank you as well for spending time with me today. And uh, any final thoughts? Any takeaways? Uh, thank Price you for feeding the fish. I love a Chinese, thanks. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, red, red, red way, red way. What is your favorite Chinese oh. food? <laughs> Do you have? Just off the top of your head. Come on. Everyone has a favorite, like... Everyone has a favorite. I just, I just <laughs> like some simple egg fried rice. Oh, nice. Good choice. Oh, Good, yes. choice. Good choice. Yes. Good choice. Very yes. easy to make. That's yes. yes. all I need. Very good. No, just, My... just on its own. Just, some, <laughs> just an egg. It's a bright. That's it. That's are all you, I need. Are you telling me an egg fried this rice? Yeah. Mongolian beef? Ooh, okay. Okay. Uh, my favorite Chinese dish is uh, black bean noodles and tang su yuk, which is uh, um, like 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 deep fried pork, but like also it's it's deep fried in a very specific way. And the sauce they give is like a sweet glaze. It's it's delicious. Oh, and the noodles awesome. the noodles are freaking delicious as well. So cool. Oh. My favorite isn't real Chinese food. What? What is it? Like it, I? What, okay, come on, you got to tell me. I mean Chicken fried rice is nice. Okay, okay. I mean, you know, ch like Chinese, Chinese shop in Canada is still, you know, I like ginger beef, which was apparently created in Calgary, Alberta. <laughs> I mean, mo most uh, curry dishes were created in fucking England, so yeah, we still call it Indian food. Tikka, mm. chicken tikka is the national dish of the UK. <laughs> like. Mo most of it was invented in fucking Birmingham, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Alright, so. Also, uh, I don't know of... about you, but Mongolian beef, that doesn't sound Chinese to me. I it was gonna say, that, is, is that not. <laughs> most Chinese food in America was made in America? I mean, yeah, but, you know, if it was made by Chinese people, then I would say it still counts. Culture is evolving and moving and fluid. I was waiting for someone to say something. I mean, I said I thought it was just the name of something. I don't claim to, I don't claim to know all Chinese food. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, at the end of um, at the end of this episode, we picked up Morden. So now we have two new, three new companions with Zaid as well. Uh, what's next? Ash mentioned that we do maybe Kasumi, just Kasumi's for loyalty because you get a next? you get you get a weapon from it. Okay, and, and I feel like I feel like naturally we've kept her waiting long enough that you know we might as well. So we should go know, do Kasumi's I, thing. Yeah, but use a weapon. Do it, does he use SMGs? Infiltrators what? use SMGs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pistols, SMGs, and snipers. Yeah. And it's it's the best SMG in the game, so you know. Okay. Nice. Very cool. It is. Uh, I, yeah. I don't so like either of the uh, the other SMG options. So let's yeah. let's have a look at the galaxy map quickly. 
So I was considering giving MJ the mod that adds the ME three weapons to the ME two, but it makes things a bit OP. Yeah, no, I'll I'll wait for that. It's fine. All right, so if we go to the mass relay, let's see what we can do. So we first the have we have Omega relay. here. We have we have Project Overlord over there. We have the convict, which is Jack over here. Uh, we have Zaid's mission here and the Firewalker mission. Then we have the Zaid. Warlord for the Krogan Doctor Oak here. And then we have Kasumi. And back on the Citadel, we have Emily Wong as well. Okay. Zaid's mission, I usually save until later because I'm incredibly, par incredibly paranoid about not being able to hit the. Uh, Yo, I want to save it. Yeah, because hit. the Paragon oh, is high. There's a high yeah, Paragon. If, thing? You, okay. if you don't have high Paragon, then you can't get his loyalty. Oh Pretty no, much. that's not good. Okay, all right. We're, that's that seems unless a little... unless you go the renegade route. Oh, okay. okay. So there is one DLC. It's not here yet, but I will tell you to do after you beat the game. Okay, okay. Um, well, we'll 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 get there. I would say yeah. So we'll we'll help Kasumi first, and then I think there are some like. Yeah, there. I mean, there was Emily Wong wanted to see me, right? So should we go? Should we go see her, or is there something else? Yeah, there's a lost operative in the Omega Nebula. Wait a minute. Oh, there's one. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. So there's Firewalker Overlord and a lost operative. So I think, I think we while we're in the Omega system, let's look for the lost operative. Then we go do Kasumi's uh, stealing memory. Then, uh, hmm. And then we'll probably have time for one more thing, depending on how, how long the loyalty mission is. So should we go, we can go N7 and then Kasumi, and then what about Project Overlord after that? Overlord is also pretty good. Or do you wanna, do, do you think we should grab more characters first? Or Overlord? Overlord you do whatever you feel like. Okay, all right, well let's go, yeah. Let's go, um, cause let's go N7 Operative, Kasumi, and then Project Overlord. Yeah. Okay, sick. <sighs> Alrighty. Have you done Overlord before? No, I don't know what's going on with Overlord. Yeah. <gasps> we unlocked Incinerate, yay! Oh, it's one of my favorite things. Oh. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, we'll unlock the first bit of Incinerate. All right, then we'll do a nice big save. We picked up Morden, we learned some interesting things about him, uh, we talked to the crew, we found some cool upgrades. I would say this was a very productive session. He fed the fish. I fed the Yay. fish, not once, but twice. And next, oh, hi, next stream. Hey, Alex is back. So I totally didn't fall asleep for three hours at some point in the stream or anything. <laughs> we were looking for you when we did Doctor Who references, but you missed them. Uh... Kasumi and Jack should be the next ME stream. Okay. Interesting. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. At least we're going to do Kasumi. And if we have more time, then we'll talk about it later. But for now, uh, that'll be it. Next stream. Let's, uh, let's quit these things. Let's quit the game for now so I can have myself on here. It's still raining. That's crazy. So, um... Yeah, I think... Give me a second while I... Okay, if we go with some... We'll go with some royalty-free Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi? Some lo-fi. There we go. Royalty-free okay. Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah. Next stream is going to be Thursday morning, but Thursday evening won't be Mass Effect. We're going to take a little bit of a break from it after, after finishing Omega. We're going to play Content Warning. Uh, we might. It depends on how long Kenshi takes. I have a promise to keep to an old friend. <laughs> so Thursday morning, we might do another, um, uh, we might do another reading corner or a music analysis. I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do Actually, have, I'm going to have both of those there because. You should definitely do a reading corner. Um... I, I have not. I have potentially Zareth might finish something, and I also have potentially someone else who might finish something, and we might I, do. I have Sweat. written an additional one thousand seven hundred and eighty-six words for you to read. Ooh. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I have found yeah. a... which constitutes ten thousand one hundred and forty-seven characters. So that's amazing. Very cool. I shall I shall invest myself in all ten thousand. Eight thousand three hundred and seventy-one if you exclude spaces. Uh <laughs> 
job, Ash. Good job. <laughs> That's excellent. Very, very good. So, Zareeth, if you finish by Thursday morning stream and you're up at stupid o'clock, then uh, you can you can come and join that. We don't have to read your stuff without it because Ash has got something as well. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. very much looking anyway, forward to right. reading. Uh, yeah, 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 Ash's writing is great. Is it an erotica? Uh, yeah, it is erotica. It's always erotica. I mean, um, not yet. Uh, oh. We're getting there. <clears throat> um, we might do music analysis. We might do, uh, maybe we'll do a double bill. I'll give it some thought. I do miss the music analysis. We haven't done it in a long time. So um, so we will, we will do more of that as well. But on Thursday evening will be my first foray i'm not even i'm not even testing it before but just in just just because i like going in blind uh we're we're gonna be playing first impressions of the game called kenshi which has been taking over parts of my friend groups uh and um it's been resurfacing uh yeah I, i've never played it before i don't know how to do it i don't know what it's about i know i know the the base game is about uh post-apocalyptic uh um never been Japan. told anything about it. I don't know how to play it. Uh, I, I've seen one video, and that's it. And what else I know about it is um, uh, what Zareeth has told me about the stories that he's played with, with his characters. And I know that uh, I will not be playing the base game at all. I will simply be... Um, uh, I will simply be, be doing the Star Wars stuff. Because there is a Star Wars, Clone Wars, like post-Order 66, New Empire, Bad Batch kind of era, uh, Clone Wars overhaul mod which makes me very excited because I have a craving for Star Wars content. So that's what I will be doing. So Thursday morning, we'll probably do reading. Uh, and Thursday evening, we'll probably do uh, we'll probably do Kenshi. And if we have time at the end of Kenshi, we'll play Content Warning. But I would like to play Content Warning as well. So maybe, maybe we'll save that for Saturday. I'm not sure. Either way, this has been great. And taters, oh, taters especially because their phone, when they watch on their phone, that might that like buffers a lot. So please tell me, uh, do you did you experience any buffering in the stream so far? Did you did you have any issues? Did anyone have any connection issues? Any kind of graphical like artifacting? As far as I wasn't able to pay attention to, no. Okay. Because I then watched both Discord and. Either then that means that I have done my research well. And if you want to know exactly what I've done, go to the beginning of the stream when you watch the VOD and I give you a very well illustrated version uh, <laughs> of that. Oh, you watch your TV today. Okay, cool. I would really like to test things on the phone. So if if you don't mind the next stream that you're able to come into, I would really, uh, I would love to see what it, what it looks like on someone's phone, whether you are buffering a lot or anything. Basically, I'm working with, um, uh, I'm, I'm working on balancing quality with bandwidth allowed. My internet can handle uh, a, a, an output of like insanely high stuff, but that doesn't mean everyone else's can. So uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure out that balance between what I can put out that gives you high quality and that doesn't like stop the stream. So yeah, if you, uh, no buffering the phone for me right now, that's fantastic. It seems like the downscaling is working really well, which is great. So yeah. Okay, I'm gonna keep working on that. I might, I might even put that up. Six thousand bitrate is my is probably my like my my upper limit. Okay. <sighs> Shall we say good night, friends? Oh, there's so many of no, you in here. No. All right, cool. Should we try again? Should we keep going? Let's play Mass Effect again. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh, no, you should uh, you should yeah. read my story right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, everyone. Thank you now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for spending time with me today. It's always good. Um, and I appreciate all of your all of your inputs as we um, as we discussed things and were unlocked. And I uh, um, yeah, I can't wait to have more discussions with you all. Uh, I will put a topic into learning to talk just so that we can continue the microtransactions. You. Thing. Okay. Wait, you like you like to argue with me? Let's go, dude. Let's <laughs> fucking go. go. You, you debate I, me, bro. Star Wars debate me, bro. Star Trek is clearly better. I may hate debate, but that doesn't mean I'm bad at it. All right, let's go. <laughs> all right, I'll I'll post a little I'll post a little timestamp to where we talked about uh to where we talked about microtransactions and games so that we can continue the conversation as we go. Uh, in learning to talk and um if i forget then someone else do it please if you're interested enough if you really don't feel like adding to it then you know that's fine but learning to talk is there to talk it's there to learn how to have conversations and communicate so there we go um microtransactions 
Learning to talk. Cool. Wow, I can't type at all. Okay. Learning to type, maybe. Learning to type. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Goodbye, Learning my you. friends. Lots of love. See Bye. you all in the next stream. Bye. 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 Uh, isn't it nice to just have this little corner of the internet that is ours? It's been so lovely to to have you all together here with me. I am. I'm very. Um, Oh, the stream is buffering? Okay. Oh, the stream is buffering and then it's back? Okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, okay. All right, we'll 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 work on it. We'll work on it. I, I'm going to look back on the VOD now because the VOD also needs to work as well. Uh, but yeah. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. A completely missed opportunity to say Bahrain. Bahrain. That's it. Bahrain. <laughs> That's all. We don't talk about what happened in Bahrain. Bahrain. You know what? If you if you keep up with that, MJ, you know what you're gonna end up with? You know what? It's hell rain. Hell rain. <laughs> 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 okay. Goodbye for real. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> everyone, thank you so much. It's been so lovely to spend time with you all. Please make sure that you take good care of yourself and your mental health. Uh, but that you also pay attention to everything going on in the world right now that is important. Please make sure that you do not lose your empathy, that you do not let what is going on in the world destroy your sense of hope and empathy. It is always there. It should always be present. Uh, and as long as we are together and talking about this in the way that we are, uh, we should not give up hope. It is currently 2.10 in the morning. Please make, your sure, make sure you stay hydrated and that you're kinder to yourself than you're currently being. And I will see you all in the next stream where we do it all over again. Take care.